Hi. <laughs> oh my god. So. But, yeah. I woke up at 5 p.m. I don't know. Yes, I'm very much alive. I don't know how I managed to do that because I went to like bed like earlier. I slept for like 10, 12 hours. How I managed to do that, I have no idea. <laughs> Because I went to bed kind of early. Like, early for me, which is like 3 a.m. But. It'd be like that when you're depressed. <laughs> you know? Anyways. Let's just get right into the last episode oh my god this is fascinating because it's been a week it's been a week since i started the, the investigations journey in general so the grand turnabout let's go Dun, dun, Not quite. <laughs> Alright, so it's still the day before my birthday. Love that. So, what are y'all gonna do now? I reckon you're through being a prosecutor, right? Yes, that's true, I suppose. I'm no longer a prosecutor. However, you can't stop thinking about what Mr. The Killer said, right? Indeed. <laughs> I congratulate you on resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? This case isn't over yet. The person in the Red Hood who kidnapped Kay at Gord Lake. And this letter from an unknown sender. Someone's schemes are at work behind this case. Yeah, Lara is here. Must be ha tough having a case you just solved still nagging at the back of your mind. Well, I got some investigating of my own to be doing, so I'll be off. That's amazing! You already decided on your next scoop? What are you saying there, Missy? Don't you be underestimating the likes of Lotta Hart. I've covered a lot of scoops, you know. I always have an extra scoop or two up my sleeves. Someone help who this. What's that? Oh, it's Penny. Someone... Please help! Hmm, this woman is... What's happened? So somebody's dead! A monster! A monster? It's a scoop! A yeah, scoop's calling me! Please follow me! It's this way! <laughs> Has something else happened again? I don't know. At any rate... We should follow her for now. Yeah. 
Eh? These are genuine hoof prints. Hoof prints? Impossible. No animal could be this large. Mr. Edgeworth, look! Agent Long. Why is he here? Huh? Someone's on the ground! He can't be. The president of Zheng Fa. Dijin Huang. Agent Long. King Long has returned. Mr. Prosecutor. It didn't take you long to get here. What happened? What happened? Ha! <laughs> That's what I like to know. It would seem that he's in a considerable amount of shock over the president's death. However... What exactly are these giant hoof prints? Footprints? And what could have happened to the president? It's a monster! A monster? Yes, sirree! Looky here! Ain't no doubt about it! These are clearly the footprints of a monster! On this day, mankind received a grim reminder. We live in fear of the mighty Mozilla. Mighty... Mozilla. This here's a scoop! I got myself a scoop! Man trampled to death by monster! I reckon it'll be the top story in tomorrow's paper. What nonsense. There are no such thing as monsters. Wait, it can't be. I am Di Jun Huang. I've heard of your deeds. You saved my country from a great crisis. The real assassin was you all along. That is correct. I received a request from a key individual to take the president's life. Man. Could he have? Hey, you! Were you the first to discover the body? Y yes, I. Um, well. Agent Long. Long she says. First come, first suspected. You! Did you really just discover the body? Uh, uh, of course! <clears throat> Please calm down, you're scaring her! <coughs> He does seem to have lost his composure. Tch. Calm down. How am I supposed to calm down? Do you know who's been murdered? Di Jian Huang, the president of Sheng Fa. Agent Long, this isn't like you. When we first met, you had an army of subordinates under your command. And you boasted of having the highest arrest rate in Interpol. And what now? Did you forget the fundamentals of investigation along with all your men? What did you say? <clears throat> Instead of questioning people at random, you should investigate the crime scene first. Am I wrong? Tch. I don't need you to tell me that. I'll do a thorough investigation. Well, at least it seems he's calmed down for now. Mr. Edgeworth, let's investigate too! Yes, let us investigate. Right now, I do not have any investigation rights. But until the police arrive... What are y'all saying? Ain't it obvious who done it? The man behind it all is the mighty Mozilla. Hmm? Well, I guess it ain't the man behind it. More like the monster behind it, you know? Good grief. Could you please just try not to interfere with the investigation? Shut your trap! You're the one who better not be sticking your nose in my business! I am forgiven you if you mess up my scoop. Um, excuse me? Hmm, it's the woman who first discovered the body. I feel like I've seen her before. You're Mr. Edgeworth, right? You remember me? Um, yes. That case. From before. <laughs> huh? Do you know her? Yes, I do. At least I think I do. <laughs> my name's Kay for a day. And I am Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Hi, you have such a cute, a cute assistant. I'm Penny Nichols. I'm an assistant at Global Studios. I'm in charge of the props and sets. It's nice to meet you. Yes, that was it. 
<laughs> oh, of course. I once handled a case that occurred during the filming of The Steel Samurai. This woman was a member of the show's staff, and she was involved in the incident. I must have met with her on numerous occasions over the course of the case. But to be honest, I had completely forgotten about her. It's nice to see you again. The fact that you are here must mean that this place is... Yes! This is sort of an outdoor film lot for Global Studios. No, it's just the name. Other side of her head. And they're shooting a movie here right now. I was the first to arrive today to set everything up for the filming. But everything seemed strange. Those giant footprints and that d dead body. I see. We shall examine the body. At any rate, could you please contact the police? Yes, right away. I'll have to take the time to listen to her story later. First, let's examine the cape, the scene. There are many things besides that body that concerns me. I'll need to examine every nook and cranny of this place. Miss Nichols, where does this ent entrance lead to? It's connected to the Grand Tower lot. Does this case also have something to do with that building? The building with the secret 51st floor, where the black market auctions were being held. <laughs> it wouldn't be strange if it were still hiding a few more secrets. Hmm? This lock and chain. Ah, someone cut through the chain! What? I'm sure it was locked up properly yesterday, though. And it's possible the culprit forced his way in through here. What is it? It's completely dented in! How did this happen? Oh, hmm. There is indeed a huge dent in the fence, fence over there. Something rather heavy must have struck it in order, to, in order to make a dent like that. It wasn't like that at all yesterday. It wasn't. So this dent was made last night. Oh, wait, if I do this again. This is the Grand Tower before where I'm standing. All I can see are just your everyday run of the mill buildings. <laughs> see anyone special around here either? Indeed, at least from where we are standing, that is. Now then, we have no time to waste. We should get back to investigating the film lot. No one special, huh? Phoenix! Right, right, I'm over here! <laughs> right! Oh my god, okay, anyways, let's check the fucking body. <laughs> there was a reason why I went over there immediately. <laughs> my love of me. <laughs> wow, it really is the president. Yes. If you think we saw him alive just a few days ago. I will make this a presidential assassination, right? This is a bit of a bit flashy for an assassination. I won't dress in self-inspected, okay. What's this white thing? Wait, is this a bone? It looks like we looks like we got a new case on our hands. It looks less like a bone. More like some kind of horn. There are no visible external wounds. But it's clear that he's already passed away. So then I guess he really did get stepped on by a a monster. Hmm. It's impossible. Huh? Don't the president's clothes look a bit dirty to you? Indeed, there appears to be some sort of yellow stain. Well, it was Di Jun Huang's plushie that he had in like the beginning of the game. I bet it's monster jewel. Okay, please be more serious. We'll need to have forensics take a closer look at the stain. So this was the state of the body. I should make a note of it. Okay, let's see here. Do, 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 do. 
Examine the body. Examine the footprint. Okay. There are broken pieces of concrete scattered all around the president. Yes, they were probably scattered about when the ground got, got damaged. And that must have been when the monster's foot went thud. If the culprit was actually a monster. Hmm, it kind of looks like a hoof, the way it's split in two like that. Yep, it definitely looks like a monster's footprint to me. And there's even three of them, Miss Redgeworth. There are no such things as monsters. Do you honestly believe they exist? No, not really. But wouldn't it be cool if they did exist? We're searching for the truth, Kay. Not for what is cool. Talk to Lara. What do you want? I'm a busy gal. You best not get in my way. Why are you so obsessed with that monster? Such a thing couldn't possibly exist. What do you say? I ain't letting that pass. Mozilla lives, and I'm sure of it. It's the mightiest monster on this side of the Pacific Rim. I don't suppose you have some kind of basis for that. I saw it with my own two eyes. What? You saw it? No way! <laughs> yes way! The mighty Mozilla was really here. Last night, when I was on the fifth first floor of the Grand Tower. You mean when you were snooping around the black market auction? That's right. I was right... It was right around when I was... I took this here photo. It's the photo of the person in the red hood. This was Jill Crane, right? You see those black next to the red hood? Well, the Mighty Mozilla was on the other side. Uh, but there is nothing in the photo. It's mighty bad to capture something like that from such a distance. But I've seen it plain as day. Mozilla's giant eye was peering in through those blinds. The monster was peering in. Looky here, now ain't, the, now ain't the time for this. I gotta gather my materials. Y'all are in my way. Now go on, get, shoot, shoot! How absurd. Mr. Edgeworth, you must be completely dumbfounded right now, aren't you? <laughs> Was it that clearly written on my face? Penny... I'm sorry about earlier, I was a little flustered. Were you here alone? Yes, I arrived before everyone else today in order to get things prepared. When I entered the lot, I immediately noticed... Those giant hoof prints. The monster's footprints, right? Weren't you surprised? Yes, because they hadn't been there yesterday evening. So that means the footprints were made last night. Well, when I first saw them, I thought they were a part of the set. But when I got closer to the studio, I saw that a person had collapsed. You didn't notice until you got closer. Lately, it seems my eyesight has gotten worse again, and my glasses aren't strong enough. As I approached the body, I finally realized what it was. I was so scared, I ran away. And that was when she ran into us. You said they were filming a movie. Could it be? The Steel Samurai. <laughs> this is like, please, please just give me anything Steel Samurai. No. So it wasn't. We're making a monster movie this time around. Have you ever heard of the Mighty Mozilla series? I'm sorry, but no. Mr. Edgeworth isn't interested in anything other than the Steel Samurai, after all. But that's not. I guess that's to be expected, as the promotion for the film hasn't really started yet. Mighty Mozilla! Its revival breaks its 12 years of silence. It's a long-awaited sequel to the original series, so the staff are all fired up. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. The film is set at the Grand Tower, so we're filming on a lo on location around this area. Come to think of it, yesterday. What's wrong, pal? Is something happened at the Grand Tower? Cut! 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 Excuse me? We're sort of in the middle of shooting a movie and, um... 
I saw them filming something then. It must have been this. I bet it ends with Mozilla completely destroying the Grand Tower. <laughs> I wonder? I'll have to look forward to finding out in the theaters. If you like, you can have this. Hmm, let's see. Battle of the Century. Now it meets its greatest rival. Mighty Mozilla versus Gordy. Wait. Gordy. This time, it won't just be Mozilla. A rival monster appears as well. Have you heard of it? Gordy of Gord Lake? War flashbacks. <laughs> Wasn't it the talk of the town two or three years ago? It's a mysterious monster living in Gord Lake. By chance, someone took a photo of it. It wasn't just the talk of the town. It was also involved in the case from my past. Gordy, huh? Now there's a name I don't really want to remember. Like I said, war flashbacks. <laughs> when the director caught wind of that rumor, he decided to add it into the story. I get the feeling he was a bit late to catch on. Please look forward to seeing the showdown between these two rival monsters. Is there anything out of place with what I've investigated so far? Should confirm what the security situation was like at the scene of the crime. Miss Nichols, was the entrance to this place locked? Yes, it's locked with this. It's one of those types where you have to put in the correct numbers to open it, right? I thought this combination lock was it also properly locked today. Yes, when I arrived here today, it was locked tight. Who knows the combination? The producer, the director, the staff, and the actors. I think everyone involved in the movie knew about it. So anyone involved with the film could have opened the combination lock and gone in. Let's see if there's anything we can put together here. Oh boy. Combination lock and rear entrance force open. Yes. The front entrance, which leads to the tower plaza, was locked with a combination lock. At the other end, the lock on the rear entrance, which leads to the grand tower, was broken. Now where does this lead us? <laughs> I know this one. The culprit entered from the rear entrance, right? Exactly. And knowing this, we now understand one more critical fact. The culprit must be someone who didn't know the number to unlock the combination lock. Right. If they knew the code, it would have been way easier to enter from the front entrance. Entering through the back door is common sense for a thief. It's much less conspicuous. You can't underestimate a culprit who thinks like a thief. Please keep your guard up. She sure becomes lively all of a sudden when this subject gets, gets brought up. To put it simply, everyone involved with the movie knows the combination for the lock. In other words, it's quite likely that the culprit is someone who is not involved with the film. Okay, I gotta just say hi to Fetus again. I wonder what case they're currently pursuing. They obviously see something at the Grand Tower. Also, it looks like Phoenix's brown hair. <laughs> A case of love. Oh yeah, I need to... Not that okay. That's fine. Uh, force open. Okay, I need to. Ah, I see. I have to deduce this. Obviously, it's here because horde. Doesn't this horn belong to that monster, Mozilla? 
You're right! It looks just like it. Maybe it's a prop for the film. Reason the size of the horn. The head should be quite large. I wonder how it ended up here. I'm sure we'll find out if we ask someone on the staff. About this horn. Have you ever seen it before? Huh? That's Mozilla's horn. It's a model we made to use in our ad campaign. Where was it? It was on the ground by the back entrance. That's strange. Mozilla's head should have been stored on the studio roof. I suppose the head would be rather large, wouldn't it? Yes. It's not as big as a real thing, of course, but it's still quite large. Look, you can see it from here. See? It's right there! It certainly is large. There sure are a lot of interesting things around here. <laughs> it's the equipment we use for filming, the Mozilla costume and the camera crane. They really are treasures! I'm getting kinda excited. It's possible that some of this equipment was used in the crime. I'd better take a closer look. I wonder what this iron pole is for. Maybe it's used for practice tree climb to practice tree climbing. No, this is a film crane. It's used to capture footage from high locations. Right now it's not attached, but normally there would be a camera connected to the end. I get it! This would be perfect for scoping out the places you're trying to steal from. Do you think they would let me borrow this? And how exactly, may I ask, do you intend to bring it back home with you? Stretchworth, you can take the base, and I'll take the top part. Does she actually expect me to help her? <laughs> if we take it nice and slow, we might be able to make it to your house, Miss Stretchworth. Not only do you want me to help you carry it, but you plan to leave it at my house. One of those sheets you lay out on the floor when you're having a picnic. It's definitely a vinyl sheet. However, I don't think it's for picnics. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, if I may... That's actually a waterproof sheet. It's used with a camera crane over there. We'll cover the camera crane with it when it's raining. Then, this sheet must be pretty big. Yes, it would be pointless if we didn't cover up the entire crane. Picnic right about now is way too cold. <laughs> Hold on, let me check how cold it is outside. Three degrees. No, thank you. Wasn't that minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit? <laughs> the weather was overcast yesterday, so we've been using it quite a bit. to go here too. Oh that wait how when connect the broken horn to the dented fence. Oh the dented fence, okay. The dent in this fence, and the broken horn. Neither of these things were there yesterday evening, based on the fact that these two things have changed. Huh, could Mozilla's have head have... Indeed, the head that was on the rooftop may have tumbled down onto the ground. This is a new possibility, which would mean that... We may have found the missing murder weapon. Eh? Really? At the moment, I can only say that it is just a, just a possibility. If the giant monster's head had fallen off from the studio roof, 
Ah, that would definitely be a murder weapon. Miss Nichols, may we investigate the studio roof? The roof? Okay, I understand. Go on ahead, but the stairs can be a little bit slippery, so please watch your step. May we see the roof? Yes, of course! Go right ahead! So this is... Mozilla. Huh? Somehow this doesn't feel quite right. See? This looks way cooler and he doesn't have a nose ring either. I see, you two aren't familiar with Mozilla. This is Mozilla's original design from 12 years ago. What? Then, what's this? What's our take on it for the new movie? Maybe we revamped the design to appeal to modern audiences. Revamped? But it looks totally different! No matter how you look at this one. It's a cow. Well, of course. After all, Musilla was originally a cow monster. A cow monster? Having a cow, an animal that humans are very familiar with, turn into a monster, allows us to question mankind's relationship with natural with nature. That's the theme of Musilla. Muzilla, <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, I, I never really thought of it. Really. <laughs> Meh, I just don't get it. Nor do I. We made this replica of the original Musilla's head for promotional purposes. We'll be using it to let people know that the film is a sequel to the original series. I guess it would be hard for people to tell that they're the same monster. As we suspected, one of the horns appears to be broken. So, did this head really crush the president? It's possible. However, there's something I don't quite understand. What's that? Miss Nichols, this head looks rather heavy. How do you transport it? Ah, it's made so that it can be taken apart. It's not that hard if you know how to do it. But if you don't know how, it'd be pretty much impossible, I think. Which means it would be difficult for anyone not involved in the film. And taken apart, would it be possible for one person to carry it alone? Definitely. Given enough time, even I could do it. However, this face is... Mr. Edgeworth, um... I feel like I've seen this cow somewhere before. Indeed. I was just thinking the exact same thing. He was on board the president's plane. And in the storeroom of the black market auction. <laughs> so, uh... Fleur and uh, Bengi, you didn't get to see this yesterday, but uh, in like the storeroom of the black market auction, there were evidence from like previous cases from the investigation games. So here we have have the plushie, we have the iron infant, and we also have the. Uh, um the lantern and the bubbly's ink and also uh use perfume the president's stuffed toy so that was a doll of the original musilla could this really be just a coincidence There is a can of paint thinner here. It's probably used for making props. Mr. Edgeworth, doesn't the area around here look kind of burnt? It does. The spread out blue sheet, newspaper, and the side of this 
can look burnt. Hmm, I wonder if this Musilla's head can also shoot out flames. Well, this old Musilla design doesn't really look like it could breathe fire anyways. That's not our main concern. I'm certain, certainly curious. There's a heater here. Uh, also, in that very same storeroom, there was also the Aleph Red. Uh, the big statue thingy from the airplane episode. And uh, also the suitcase. <laughs> the hideous suitcase. <laughs> There's a heater here. Do you think the staff uses it to keep themselves warm? It's possible. Although it may be spring, it can still get rather chilly at night. Mr. Edgeworth! People are gonna think you're an old geezer if you say stuff like that. Even in the best of times, you tend to see things like an old man. Can't you at least try to be more cheerful and lively when you talk? I really seem that unlively. Some sort of wooden stand has fallen over. The area around it seems to be burnt black. Huh? Mozilla's head should have been on that stand. But the legs have broken off. It doesn't look like it can be used anymore. Hmm, the broken legs seem to be badly burnt. I think it's safe to assume that a small fire occurred here. A small fire, huh? Is that what burned and broke the legs of the stand? When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted if Mozilla's head was on top of the stand. It would have fallen off! So the head fell down because of the fire! Yes, and if that's the case... I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. There's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make sure that this doesn't happen again. I don't think anyone used the heater yesterday. I see. In that case, I wonder what caused the fire. Is there a table? Go back. Talk to Lan. Mr. Prosecutor, so we meet again. Indeed, just a few days ago, we met at the detention center. Agent Lang, what brings you here? Some boring work, nothing you need to know about. Tch, you always pick the worst time to show up. Anyone ever tell you that bad things happen when you're around? Just don't get in the way of my investigation, okay? I must avenge the death of our presidents. <laughs> you're not wrong! It does! You arrived here before us. What were you doing in a place like this? You suspect me? <laughs> Come now. I heard a scream. It was the woman who found the body. After hearing the scream, I came in through that entrance over there. Apparently, it wasn't locked. And why is there a lock on the ground over there? I should take a closer look. When I got in, the woman who found the body was already running out the other exit over there. So he came here around the same time we did. Why were you at the Grand Tower? Well, I had my reasons. He also said something along those lines when we met at the detention center. Maybe he's really a fan of the giant of giant monsters and he came to sneak a peek at the Mozilla set. Giant monsters? I have no interest in such things. He clearly doesn't think the murderer is, the, is a monster either. Regrettable what happened to the president. Yeah, Wang was the pride of Sheng Fa, and yet. It seems like you were quite close to the president. The previous head of the Long clan, my father, served under President Wang. Protecting the life of the president has long been our clan's greatest duty. My old man received a great number of special medals from the president himself. As a token of his trust, the president left with his will in the protection of the Lung Clan. 
There was medals in that will, and they were the pride of our clan. Our family treasures, so to speak. Tch. Who would have thought the day to unseal that will would arrive so soon? Oh, that will, okay. So then, I guess the president was like a close family friend. Huh? But during the incident at Gord Lake, why weren't you with the president, Mr. Long? Well, a lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, me and my own man were close friends, and our clan protected the president's life. But then, he suddenly changed. It's as if he became an entirely different person. Nowadays, he doesn't even have, this, have a shred of faith in the police force of Sheng Fa. Twelve years ago. I wonder what went on then. Even so, I still respect the man. Sheng Fa is a small country. But he carried the nation with his strength. Damn it. Just what were his bodyguards doing? Have you already contacted the embassy? Yeah, of course. I've also informed Zheng Fa and my clan as well. It's gotten pretty hectic here. Hectic there. What with the will and all. And it'll be the same here, once the bodyguards show up. If you don't want to see me rip into them, I suggest you get out of here soon. Mr. Prosecutor. Right now. I'm just a single Interpol agent. A literal lone wolf. Probably won't let me be in charge of the investigation. But you better believe. Thanks, I was sharp as ever. I'll definitely capture the culprit with my own hands, and you'd better not get in my way. Mr. Prosecutor, I'm gonna take my leave here for a bit. There's something I have to check. Agent Long. I wonder if he's caught onto something. Move it. What do you say? I guess you're just a brat with no manners. And you're an annoying old man. Quit your yapping already. I I'm terribly sorry. Come on, John. Tch. Oh, what were you doing? Who was that? Someone from the police. Why did you suddenly pick a fight with him? Hmm. It sure was a tense standoff. He didn't budge an inch, even before Agent Long. Ah, allow me to introduce you. This is John Marsh. He's the lead actor in our movie. The lead actor? Is this child? Hi, I'm Kay for a day. Nice to meet you. And this is Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Prosecutor? He's a pretty famous prosecutor, you know. So, like, in, in Japan, it's like this... Uh, not rumor, what's it like? It's not true, because... <laughs> it's just bullshit, but anyways. Like, there is this common belief that you, like, if you drink milk, you will grow tall. <laughs> so, like, if you ever uh, meet, like, any, like, anime character or something that, that are short and, like, despise milk, that is why, because they've drank so much milk and they're still so short and they're just, like, full of spite because they're so short. But it's not true. What it does, milk just, like... Uh, strengthens your bones. What? But... But it's not that in Norway. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> That's just a coincidence. It is genetics, exactly. I 
didn't know that there was like... Oh, my, uh, my big brother is also almost two meters. I believe he's like 180 or something or something, I don't know. <laughs> You're still taller than me, and I'm the tallest female in our family. Oh my god, I'm so short. He's a pretty famous prosecutor, you know? And he's now wearing a prosecutor's badge. Ugh. He's frightfully perceptive. Ah! John, it's probably better if you didn't go over there. That's certainly not a sight a child should see. However, he is someone involved with the case. I'll need to speak with him later. Yes, the metric system is better. By a long shot. John, was it? Would you mind if I ask you a few questions? Hey, oh man, you're really a prosecutor? Yes. Hm. Oh man. Well, actually, Edgeworth, no. <laughs> and first show me your pr prosecutor's badge. I don't have my badge with me right now. Then you can't prove you're a prosecutor, old man. <laughs> Every other stream is not talking shit about Imperial! <laughs> it's kinda of funny. Hmm, this kid is a tough nut to crack, isn't he? Want me to give it a try? Yes, I'm counting on you, kid. I'm not good with kids. So, John, you're an actor? Yeah, what about it? You're amazing! That's so cool! Not really. Hmm, good grief. At least that seems to have worked. The Imperial System Service! <laughs> um, about these horns. What about them? John's horns are specially made prosthetics. John plays a young boy who has a special connection with Musilla. He can communicate with Musilla using those horns. Right, John? Shut up! Stop blabbering about that stupid stuff! Oh, sorry. I think I'm beginning to see the kind of relationship these two have. But it must be amazing to star in a movie. And you're only in elementary school. Ah! Despite how he looks, John is 13 years old and he's already in middle school. What? But he's so small and he's wearing a kitty backpack. The backpack is part of his costume. He's an actor after all. I see, but he's still really tiny. It's probably better if you didn't talk about his height in front of him. In front of him. Thought I told you to stop blabbering about stupid stuff. Exactly, that's why he just chokes the milk. I said it makes sense. That is why he's short and full of spites, okay? S sorry. It seems the only thing that's not a prop is that milk carton. That guy over there. He's the president, right? Yep, do you know him? Yeah, I met him before. This boy has met with the president. Hmm. <laughs> guy makes me sick. But that's not a very nice thing to say. Why do you hate the president so much? Huh? Now he's giving me this silent treatment. Uh, um, the truth is, the president was involved in the film. The president was involved in the film? What do you mean? He was supposed to have a brief cameo in the movie. He came by to look around the set some time ago. That was when we met with John. 
when he met with John. Why would the president be appearing in this film? We heard he was a fan of the original Mozilla series. And so we made him an offer. We thought it would make great publicity, you see. He comes on the movie set, like he's some sightseeing tour. He's on some sightseeing tour. It's so annoying. John, you really shouldn't say stuff like that. It's not nice. Shut it! I guess he couldn't tolerate having an amateur appear in his film. Alright, here. What's this? Huh, ah, was this from yesterday? A photo. Yeah. Since it was developed, I brought it along with me. You can have it. You think it turned out quite nicely? So you brought it all the way here for me? Thank you so much. No, not really. I just happened to have it with me. Sure, John. Sure. <laughs> Excuse me, but may I take a quick look at it? Oh, sure. Here you go. So this was taken yesterday. Neither the hoof prints nor the body are in it. With that, this portion of the, of the investigation seems to be finished. So the murder weapon really is... Yes, as it stands now, the possibility that it was a monster head is quite high. You're not wrong. So he ended up being squashed by the falling head, huh? They're extremely late to the party. The bodyguards and the police have finally arrived. Mr. President! They really were far too late. Damn it! Who did this? Pay for this. I swear I'll make them pay. You know, this much is enough to put me at ease. The person who did this to Huang. I've already got my eye on a suspect. What? What do you mean? Even though Huang was the victim, he doesn't have extraterritorial rights here. Your country's police have the right to investigate. However, I've already spoken with them. As an agent of Interpol, they were letting me assist in the investigation. So they've already established a plan for this investigation. I've already found my prey. Now it's time for the hunt. Take a look at this. It's a printout from a security camera on the Grand Tower rooftop. Uh, sis, this camera records people as they get off the rooftop elevator. And guess who was recorded? The president and his killer can be clearly seen. Well, why is Miss Courtney there? So he's saying Judge Courtney is the murderer. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the goddess of law to you. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze the Best. Could she, who hates crime more than anyone, have... Agent Long, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Just now, I heard a rumor at the Grand Tower. Miles Edgeworth, that you are no longer a prosecutor. Naturally, that means you don't even have a shred of in investigative authority. So what would be the point of having a logic battle with someone like you? Hmm. Why would you say something like that? Didn't you also just get reduced to being a lone agent? Hey, answer me this. Even though you've lost your position as a prosecutor, why are you still sticking your neck into this case? Why do I still continue to investigate? Agent Long, why are you pursuing the criminal who murdered the president? Because you're an Interpol agent. Right now, I am also chasing after a certain person. Someone in the shadows, who was behind the murder at the Grand Tower yesterday. Someone who placed Kay in grave danger. Even now, they are lurking somewhere, 
laughing at us. You will uncover the truth and bring them to justice. And a title such as prosecutor has nothing to do with it. As long as the truth remains hidden, I will continue to seek out that truth. For that is a part of my creed. <laughs> you. You're always trying to be so clever. But you really are kind of an idiot. Of course it is. Hmm. Me. An idiot. How rude. That's the answer I wanted to hear. Alright. I'll pay play along with you for a bit. I've lost all my men. And you've lost your title. And yet, we still continue to investigate. Let's begin this battle of logic between two kindred spirits. You have my thanks. However, I won't go easy on you. I'll definitely catch the criminal who murdered Huang. And I won't let you get in my way. Yes, I wouldn't have it any other way. Stop flirting, goddammit, you've just fucking met. And then immediately... Let me show you the truth that this wolf has sunk his fangs into. It's enough. A woman met with the president on the top of the Grand Tower. The not defense attorney. <laughs> Two nights ago, she pushed the president off the roof and he fell onto this film lot. At the time, there was no one else on the rooftop aside from the those two. There's no room for doubt. That woman murdered the president. It was just the two of them alone on the rooftop. No bodyguards. Yeah, I confirmed it with those bodyguards over there. They didn't know about it either. Because he managed to give them the slip, he must have had something secret to talk about. President Huang and Judge Courtney. Did those two have some sort of connection? Apparently, he had an arrangement with the owner of the Grand Tower. He requested the entrance to the viewing platform be restricted so that they could be alone. Well, it's not like the owner could turn down a request from the president. Does that mean the last person to see the president was... Exactly. Courtney, I mean. It's gotta be her. Agent Long's reasoning is certainly sound. However, he has overlooked one major thing. And that's where I must strike. In commemorative photo. Oh, two nights ago. Yeah, but he wasn't here. <laughs> Shi Long Lang. For the interval agent with the highest arrest rate to have fallen so low. Do you say? This is a commemorative photo taken by the staff at Global Studios. Everyone's got such great smiles. Well, Except for John. This photo was taken yesterday. What? If Judge Courtney had murdered the president two days ago, then his body should have been here, been there, when this photo was taken. <laughs> Perhaps you should have listened a bit more carefully to those involved in the case. Questioning witnesses is one of the basic fundamentals of an investigation, is it not? I've captured Mr. Edgeworth's great smile. You really do look most alive when you're cornering your opponent. Mm-hmm. Just as I expected. It's been a while since I've felt like this. Agent Blanc, haven't you been a little hasty in your reasoning? Tch. I don't need your advice. Long as she says. The wrath of a wolf lasts a hundred years. My anger towards the woman who killed the president cannot be suppressed. I too wish to capture the culprit. However, there is no doubt that the body appeared here last night. Therefore, the president could not have fallen to his death. Yeah, he was crushed by the monster head. The crime occurred here at the film lot, not on the rooftop at that grand tower. So that's what you think. Still, I don't intend to stray from my logic either. However, 
could not have fallen to his death two nights ago. This photo proves that. Is that so? Think about it this way. Two nights ago, Courtney pushed the president off the roof and killed him. And he was just falling for two days straight. <laughs> Afterwards, she snuck into the film lot to hide the body. In here. Wouldn't it be easy to hide a body in a costume or behind all this equipment? And all she had to do last night was, retrie was retrieve the body. Once we search this area, we'll know where she hid the body. Unfortunately, there is no need for a search. What do you say? This piece of evidence proves that Judge Courtney could not have hidden the body. Uh, it's a lock, right? Yeah. All the entrances to this film lot were locked. The chain on the back entrance was only cut last night. What? Therefore, Judge Courtney could not have entered the film lot two nights ago. Yeah. But the president could only have fallen two nights ago. Why are you so insistent that the crime occurred two days ago? Why? Because there's still more to the security camera footage. The photo was rec recorded 10 to 20 minutes after the president went up to the roof of that woman. That woman, she came back down the elevator alone. After that, there was no sign of the president getting on the elevator at all. There's no other way for the president to get down without using the elevator, is there? No, it was case two that was so long, but it was only like four chapters, but it like lasted so long. But like, meanwhile, the nine episodes for, for episode three, they just went by, they just flew by. There's no other way for the president to get down without using the elevator, is there? Besides getting pushed off the roof by that woman, that is. Oh, really now? The president never came down the roof, down from the rooftop. That's right. The security camera is always watching the entrance of the elevator. It was specifically set up to record anyone who entered or exited the rooftop. Essentially, the camera created a locked room. One which the president vanished from. A locked room, I see. This is quite an unfavorable piece of evidence for Judge Courtney. A rooftop escape! That's a difficult feat. So even the Yathagarasu can't just fly through this through through this guy. That's right. I I still need more training to be able to pull that off. Are you saying you're going to train yourself to fly? There's no other way for the person to get down. Oh, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? As a matter of fact, there was one, a hidden route, that is. A way down without using the elevator. You better not tell me he flew off or something. There's no need for that. It's quite simple. The president just needed to know about the existence of the hidden 51st floor. 51st floor? This building has a hidden 51st floor. It is accessible through a secret hatch on the rooftop. Using that route, it would be possible to leave the rooftop without using the elevator. Hidden room. Secret hatch. How could the president have even known about that? I wonder. I don't know the answer myself. I am merely raising a possibility. In the first place, what's this all about? This hidden 51st floor. Sounds like something that Ninja Girl over there would love to get into. No way! I'm sick of that place! Okay, that place only holds bad memories, after all. The 51st floor was a secret storeroom for the black market auction. Its true purpose was only exposed yesterday. Black market auction? You. You aren't suggesting the president was involved in something like that, are you? I have no proof. However, the possibility exists, does it not? Hmm. I wouldn't put it past that president. Eh? 
impossible. The president would never... He would never be involved in the black market auction. What's this? You punks, are you prepared? If you're gonna spout nonsense like that, I'll tear you to pieces. She ran away. You don't have any idea. The amount of respect that man has earned from his country's people. I see. We have seen the president's true colors. However, the people of Shang Fa remain in the, in the dark. <laughs> Should I inform Agent Long of the president's true nature? No, telling him now would only further cloud his judgment. I understand, Agent Long. Please calm down. We spoke out of line. I apologize. Sorry, my emotions got the best of me. And Kay, how long do you plan on hiding? You can come out now. I'm sorry. It's fine. My anger is directed towards the president's killer. Well, I'll be. You're actually a pretty good guy, ain't ya? That loyalty to your president is mighty admirable. <laughs> Was it to you? Nah, no, don't be like that. I got some good news for you, I reckon. What? The president ain't never passed through the 51st floor. You can count on me. Really? I was in the storeroom myself. I saw it with my very own eyes. That's right. She snuck into the storeroom that day. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. No, Long is amazing. <laughs> I love Long. What is it? I don't intend to give the culprit a single step of leeway. No one's seen the president since he met with Courtney two days ago. We stand Long. What we, what we do. It doesn't change the fact that the body wasn't here yesterday. If he were pushed off two days ago, it would be odd that he wasn't found until yesterday. I doubt a fall from the roof would take a whole day. I'll admit, there are a few things I still haven't figured out. Regardless, there is one thing I am certain of. There is? What exactly occurred here last night? I'm certain we'll have to look into that in order to uncover the truth. Because the body and the hoof prints could only have appeared last night, right? Agent Long, we'd like to bring the body in for the autopsy. Huh. It's in your hands. Make sure you show the proper respect. I also have one more thing to report. What is it? We found some footprints near the body. Um, they were left within the area that looks like a monster's footprint. There were human footprints within the monster's footprint. What kind of footprints? Sir, they were the footprints of a child, about the size of an elementary school student. What? Huh? A an elementary school student? Wait, could it be... Who was that? Um... Miss Nichols? I... I am so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please excuse my rudeness. Is there something you want to say? What is she so scared of? I'm worried that you'll think poorly of me, but... Please let me testify something. It's really important. That's not something you need to be so worried about. What is it? Last night, I... I actually came here. What? <laughs> there is another, ki another kid in this case, actually. Why did you come here? Well... It's not Cody. <laughs> I got a little worried, so I stopped by to check up on John. John? You mean John Marsh? As I thought. Yes, last night, um... Yeah, I knew you wanted to say that because Penny is there. <laughs> John stayed here late in order to practice by himself. Wow, he's really dedicated. Well... This movie is the first time he's starring as the lead role, so... I'm sure he wants to do his best. She must have witnessed something last night. When was this? 
um, if I remember correctly, I think it was a little past 10 p.m. I mean, a, a tiny bit. And they would also be like the same age, I believe. Looked like it was going to rain, and I was getting worried, so I came to check up on him. And when I got here, well, I, um... You saw something. Y yes. John was practicing by himself. And right above his head, he saw a long, long neck. A neck. Y yes, its skin was really scaly, almost like a reptile. It was like... The neck of a dinosaur. Whoa there. Could that have been... Gordy? I thought I went hunting for it. It was a bust, but I reckon this could be the real deal. What? So this time it's Gordy? That's right. I was really surprised. After all, John is the boy who can communicate with Mozilla. Yeah, that's right. Them horns of his let him hear what the monsters say, right? Even so, he was looking up at Gordy's face and was talking to it. It was like they were friends. D doesn't that sound weird? You said it, sister. That's pretty darn strange, I reckon. That boy's a little traitor. It seems she's gotten reality mixed up with the movies. Hey, Missy. Did you really see that? Yes, but I was so shocked, I immediately, immediately ran home after that. What do you make of this, Mr. Prosecutor? Has another monster taken the stage? It looks like he's holding around his arm! <laughs> <He's> like... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they must have done this on purpose, I swear to God. <laughs> it looks like... <laughs> it looks like... It looks like Lung has his arm wrapped around Edgeworth's arm. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> oh, please, Eusaurus. Interesting. They are huddling. <laughs> Agent Lung. Do you really believe this absurd testimony? <laughs> I couldn't care less about the monsters. However, it looks like who we need to talk to next has been decided now, hasn't it? Shoulder? That's not a shoulder, but here is the shoulder. However, it looks like who we need to talk to next has been decided now, hasn't it? John Marsh. He was here last night. It's very likely he saw something, isn't it? boy. John Marsh, we got some questions for you. Um, John kind of left a while ago. What? Let's go after him. Where'd he run off to? He might have just gone back home. That's right! I mean, it doesn't look like they're going to get any filming done today. Or he may have run away. Aren't you just overthinking things? <laughs> He's still a child. I can't imagine that he could have murdered the president by himself. He said he was alone. Maybe that monster helped him. A boy can summon a monster to his aid, right? Hmm. Very funny. I'm not saying that kid's definitely the culprit. Right now, he's the most prominent witness we have. So we'll need to find that brat. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth! Gummy! Uh, I... 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 He ran away! What is the detective doing? Doesn't matter. 
It's not like I can rely on this country's police anyway. Agent Lung, do you intend to continue investigating by yourself? Yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that? Didn't you always have a small army of subordinates with you before? That's right. But you know, being a lone wolf isn't all that bad. You don't have to worry about your subordinates or partners. All you need are your fangs. Simple, right? <laughs> subordinates and partners. Well then, I'll be seeing you too. <laughs> Things are getting interesting. I reckon I'm about to get a real get real busy myself. After all, I got me a pair of monsters to hunt. I'm definitely getting my hands in the scoop. Things have gotten pretty crazy, haven't they? Indeed. There's the footprints of Musilla, and now the shadow of Cordy. It's almost exactly like the movie. How about we go monster hunting too? Well, hmm, isn't that... Isn't that one of Lang's, Lang's men? <laughs> Lang is a furry! Don't do Long like this! He's one of Agent Long's subordinates. We met him during, during another case. Excuse me. Oh, Prosecutor Edgeworth, it has been a while. Shouldn't you be following Mr. Long? Agent Long, Shifu, is no longer my boss. What exactly happened? Do you remember the incident from one month ago? The Atagurasu incident we had been involved with. Agent Long made a major mistake back then. He almost aided and abetted a dangerous criminal. Certainly, it had come quite close to that at the time. Shifu took responsibility for what happened, and our team was disbanded. Disbanded? That's what Agent Lang was talking about when he said he had become a lone wolf. And then... Why are you here? That's... Well, I was a little worried about Shifu. It seems that even now, he's still chasing after them. The ghosts of 12 years past. Ghosts of 12 years past? So what are you? I'm sorry, I've already said too much. If you'll excuse me. These ghosts Agent Lung is chasing after. Do they also have something to do with this case? Looks like everyone's left now. So what do we do now? Well, Miss Hart is going after the monsters and Agent Lung is going after John. We should also try approaching this case from a different angle. What angle would that be? We should listen to what Judge Courtney has to say. Ah, that's right! If I'm not mistaken, Miss Courtney is... Well then, I shall take my leave here. I will be presiding over Patricia Rowland's trial. She said that she had a trial coming up. Indeed. Let's head to the courthouse as well. Yay! Oh my god, that was a long chapter. <laughs> I don't know if I'll finish this today, but I'll, I'll certainly try, I guess. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my, oh, oh, oh no, this is a long one. Uh, the funniest thing about this case is that it happens like a day before my birthday. <laughs> Slightly longer? I've been sitting here for almost one hour and a half. Court is now in session. Is the defense ready? Of course, Your Honor. We can begin whenever you want. The prosecution has been ready from the start, Your Honor. Jill Crane, the attorney in charge of the defense, has passed on from this world. Furthermore, Sebastian the Best, the prosecutor in charge, has disappeared. 
and so Francisca and Mr. Shields have taken over their duties. Before we begin, I would like to apologize for the delay of today's trial. As the crime took place in the prison, a place where justice is normally administered, and the defendant was the warden of the prison, further exacerbating the situation. Additional time was specifically arranged to investigate and prepare for the trial, especially I mean. In addition, the defense attorney in charge of the case, Jill Crane, has recently passed away. Due to these circumstances, the trial was further delayed. Mr. Shields, Ms. Von Karma, at this time, I'd like to give you my gratitude for taking up the responsibility on short no notice. Guess this is the last job Courtney Pye's friend left behind for us, huh? Well, Uncle Ray's more than happy to help out. Although, having said that, I only had enough time to skim through the case files. Are you okay on your end, Franny Pie? What kind of prosecutor abandons his own case and vanishes without a trace? I won't allow, 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 <laughs> allow any more delays in this trial while we wait for that foolish man to return. I have received the evidence just now. There should be no problem continuing the trial. You have my thanks. And with that, I hereby call the defendant, Patricia Rowland, to the stand. Now then, will the prosecution please give us their opening statement? Very well, Your Honor. The defendant. Please wait, Your Honor. What is it? Well, there is something I'd like you to fill me in on. Just what exactly am I doing in a place like this? Then perhaps you would do well to listen to the opening statement. Hmm. So if I listen to it, I get it, huh? Okay then, let's hear it. That was the plan from the start. Now if you would kindly shut up and listen. The incident occurred in the detention center and the prison warden, Roland, is in charge of. <laughs> the victim is Horace Knightley, who was being held in the detention center. The prosecution is certain that this woman here is the culprit. This knife, the murder weapon, is the decisive ev- Huh? Miss Von Karma, is something wrong? Th th that's impossible. The evidence is... What's wrong with the evidence, Franny Pie? The evidence? The knife's gone. The chisel with Dorgan's bell attached to it is missing too. Wh what? Order! Order! Prosecutor Von Karma, what is the meaning of this? I... I don't understand it either. You're either, Your Honor. If there is no evidence, then I suppose there's not much reason for me to be here. Some prosecutor can't even hold up onto one little piece of evidence for a dunce. I, I only received everything that the previous prosecutor had. Huh? It appears the culprit is that pampered prosecutor, the boy blunder. Hey, Courtney Pie, what is it? Your Honor, considering our predicament, Let's say we postpone the trial until later. Overruled. The defense's proposal is overruled. Hey, Courtney Pie. I know, right? It'd be troubling for me if this trial were to be delayed any further. I just want everyone to know that I'm innocent as soon as possible. Innocent! innocent. I've had more than enough of your foolish... And besides, you don't have any evidence, right? I recall a certain saying, in court, evidence is everything, wasn't it? Since there's no evidence, that would make me innocent, isn't that right, Your Honor? That is correct. Eh? <laughs> what? The prosecution has not produced sufficient evidence to prove the defendant guilty. As such, I hereby find the defendant, Patricia Rowland, well, your horse is Courtney Pie. You can't just declare her innocent all of a sudden. Is something the matter? For the defense to object to a not guilty verdict. Well, I mean, even you must know that the warden over there is guilty, right? I mean, you were there. You were you were literally there when we proved her guilt. <laughs> you were there with us when we found the murder weapon, exactly. 
Mr. Shields, a judge must remain impartial when handing down the verdict. That is why I cannot allow myself to get caught up in my own personal feelings. The person who was present when the murder weapon was discovered and the judge sitting before you now are two completely different people. You're kidding, right? I can only hand down a verdict based upon the evidence that was presented. Objection! There is evidence, it's just... Well, it's not here right now, but... A few minutes, that's all I need. I'll find the evidence and return to court, without fail. The prosecution requests a brief recess, Your Honor. The defense would also like a recess, Your Honor. Courtney Pye, please. I understand. I shall grant your request. Well, just seen, darling. Aren't you wishy-washy today? This court will now adjourn for a 15-minute recess, during which the prosecution and the defense shall prepare for the resumption of the trial. Understood, Your Honor. Huh, that was a close one. Court is now adjourned. What I find really, like, confusing is that, like, the the courtroom is flipped from what it is in his attorney. <laughs> and I'm like, but the prosecution is on the other side. <laughs> Strange. Didn't we find it together? The evidence? Yes, we certainly did. Huh? What's the matter, detective? It looks like the metal detector is reacting to this alligator. Really? Why? Of course. That's why the metal detector reacted. Judge Courtney, I'd like you to take a look at this. The chisel? Wasn't that just a fake murder weapon? Dorgan hid this chisel inside his dog's mouth. And the real murder weapon was hidden in very much the same way. The real murder weapon is in the pond, inside the alligator. I wonder if it was stolen by someone. Mr. Edgeworth. Gumshoe? No. Miss Berry and Mr. Keys, did you come to attend the trial? I came because I hear there's a really fun show around here, so where is it? Oh god, what was the voice I gave him again? <laughs> I don't remember. The trial for the case I got caught up in was supposed to have already started, but our practice ran a little late. I believe it was somewhere around here, wasn't it? Actually, two key pieces of evidence have gone missing. The chisel and the knife. The trial is in recess now, sort of like an intermission. You just missed it, Simon. <laughs> what? What? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> like Simon's going to get arrested again. <laughs> Regina, please! Can we not? Like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> no way, no way, no way! I can't! Hmm, I guess Simon is his usual noisy self. Huh? Who is to think that I would be humiliated like this? And here comes another noisy individual. Ah, Francisca. Oh no, Franny Pie. Let's just take a moment and calm down a bit. Maybe you could put that whip of yours away, hmm? What do you say? That foolish prosecutor. When I get my hands on him, my whip is going to give him the thrashing of a lifetime. Ugh. Miles, why don't you try talking to her? Good grief. On that note, I guess I should probably hear what she has to say. Oh, if it isn't former prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Francisca. Those who have abandoned the path of a prosecutor do not belong here. Now be a good boy and go home. 
Figure out what you want to do with your life. Still, what are you going to do, Francisca? The recess is only 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You're always so calm and collected. Like an anchorman reading off a teleprompter. It makes me sick! I should probably stay classy and avoid a confrontation with her for now. Francisca, I never expected you to end up taking over the prosecution for this case. The bodyguard of the president of Sheng Fa, Horace Knightley, was murdered. The defendant is the former warden of the prison, Patricia Rowland. The knife she used as a murder weapon has been prepared as evidence. However, the murder weapon has disappeared without, without a trace. Not only did he abandon his own case, but he also made me look like a fool in court. Mm. The next time I see that foolish fool of a prosecutor, I'll whip some backbone into him. Don't mind if you whip some backbone into him. But stop whipping innocent bystanders. Apparently it's kind of fun if we present the, the crime scene. Notes. This is... Sheng Fa's... Yes, the president of Sheng Fa, Di Jun Huang. We discovered his body, just recently. What are you saying? There must be some kind of mistake. No, I confirmed it with my own eyes. There was no mistake. Then, this incident, could it have something to do with my trial? No, it's nothing of the sort. We just came here to speak with Judge Courtney. Miles Edgeworth, are you trying to distract me by showing me evidence that is unrelated to this trial? Mm -hmm. My apologies. It seems I shouldn't have shown it to you. Shouldn't have shown it to me? Are you trying to conceal the incident from me? No! Just what do you want from me? A bit of fun, I guess. Anyways. Ray. Okay, looks like you've gotten your memories back. Yeah, I'm all better now. Uncle Ray was really worried, you know? <laughs> that other Kate was also pretty cute. Well then, now that you've recovered, how about a hog for old time's sake? Nope. We need to focus on the trial right now. Yeah, things aren't looking good. At any rate, we'll have to search for the evidence. But we can't interrupt the trial. Hmm, Uncle Ray's in the pickle. We found that there was someone who could find the evidence for us. Yeah, I know, it's really weird, and it's like, only the pretty girls. The look of expectation on your face says it all. Miles, you still don't have your prosecutor's badge, right? Do you finally feel like following in your father's footsteps? Hmm, I simply left it in someone else's care. I wasn't, I wasn't stripped of my badge. Furthermore, right now, I am unable to follow in my father's footsteps. I see. Well, there's no need to rush your decision. Take all the time you need to determine the path you want to follow. In any case, the door is always open for you at the Edgeworth Law Offices. Mr. Shields. If only there was someone who could go search for the evidence for us. Someone. If only someone, someone could. Very well, I'll go look for them. Oh, Miles, you do that for us? Of course, finding the evidence within 15 minutes will be no easy task. Well, if worse comes to worst, Uncle Ray and Franny Pie will help you stall for time. <laughs> nudge, nudge. It's actually a jabbit. <laughs> Until you recover the evidence, we won't let her hand down a verdict. Please do so. Francisca, are you okay with this? You're asking me, Francisca von Kama, to help you out? You'd be better off spending the rest of your life as an anchorman for the local news. Ms. von Karma, this is an emergency. We could really use your cooperation. Hmph, I understand. 
As acting prosecutor, I'm along with that attorney over there, shall continue this trial. Meanwhile, you, the former prosecutor, shall run around and look for the evidence. All for my sake. It's a job that suits you perfectly. I'm glad that you're on board. I'll help out too, because I really don't want to get arrested again. It sounds like fun! Regina wants to tag along too! Alright, that will be helpful. Now then, where should we begin? I think we should go find that person and hear what they have to say. Who should we talk to in order to learn where the evidence went? Yes, the person in charge of the evidence was Sebastian the Best. Ah, you mean that rookie prosecutor, right? Got it. I'll leave him to you. Righty, time for Uncle Ray to have a strategy meeting with the opposing counsel. It's the two of us. Miles Edgeworth, you better not keep me waiting, lest you end up like your friend here. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. Franny Pie, wait for me! Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> Regina is in this game. <laughs> now then, let's go help look for Sebastian as well. Oh my god. Don't remind me of turn about Big Top. <laughs> if you watch the anime, though, that's like... Yeah, the tiniest wrong cameo. It was so good. But in the anime... <laughs> turn about Big Top is actually kind of... Okay. Also, uh, you get, like, more of an idea of, like, what kind of relationship Mo had with the ringmaster. And, like, when I say they were lovers. Judge <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. If it isn't Prosecutor Edgeworth, I hope that all is well. All is not well. Just what was going on in that trial earlier? <laughs> Literally, yeah, Mo and the Ringmaster. <laughs> okay, there's no need for that. But even though Miss Courtney should know exactly who the culprit is, what made you... I know, right? He is so... He is so wounded by him being God. Would you start a circus with me? <laughs> that was pretty much what happened, though. Oh god, that was so good. Honestly. 10 out of 10. But also, in the anime, they made um, Adrian Andrews and... Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Celeste? They made them sisters! I'm sorry? Hello? They said, no, we're not gonna let lesbians overshadow the two gay lawyers not happening not on our watch let's make them sisters what <laughs> in a court of law the only thing that truly matters is evidence whatever my own feelings may be it should not affect the verdict so is this judge persona of justine courtney is this the judge persona of justine courtney we're seeing cold-blooded and heartless it's fine if you think of me as such even as a judge, she's still this stubborn. Judge Courtney, there's just one thing I'd like to ask you. And what would 
that be? Two nights ago, you went to the roof of the Grand Tower. The roof, you say? You met with the president there, correct? The two of you were caught on the security camera. Is there some sort of problem with that? Today, the president's body was discovered. Very close to the Grand Tower. Th that that's You understand now, don't you? You're a suspect. What happened between you and the president up on the roof? Nothing. We merely spoke for a few minutes. Once our business was done, I headed straight home. I took the elevator back do down alone. Indeed. That was shown on the security camera footage as well. What exactly did you and the president talk about? <laughs> as soon as I wrote honk, my browser crashed. It's really saying no, don't fucking remind me of that bullshit. Th that? I cannot say. I see. However, I cannot afford to let up just yet. That being the case, huh, I guess my only remaining option is to use that. She is definitely hiding something. And I'm going to draw it out of her. Logic chess. 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 Two nights ago, Judge Courtney met with President Huang. It is true that I spoke with President Huang on the roof of the Grand Tower. <laughs> However, we only discussed business. There is no need to tell you what was said. Logic Monopoly? Logic Twister? Hmm. Just like in the trial earlier, she won't reveal her personal feelings easily. When she's speaking as a judge, it would be better for me to wait and see what develops. Okay, I see. Now then, I'll start by asking her what she talked about with the president. Would you tell me what you and the president talked about? My meeting with the president was strictly business. And since it has nothing to do with you, I am not obligated to answer your question. I appreciate your understanding. Even so, you certainly are a very busy person, aren't you? Mm. See, that would make sense. Actually, that does make sense. I was thinking of like the the logic feature in general because that he just he um uh, he got from his father i guess <laughs> so yeah absolutely head canon accepted you're a member of the pic and a judge as well you even assist with the investigations I am simply fulfilling the professional duties that I have been, that have been assigned to me. <laughs> Psychologx. <laughs> was your meeting with the president also one of the duties assigned to you as a judge? Yes, of course it was. I am one who lives for the law. I would never act outside my professional duties. This morning, you returned Kay's promise notebook to me. I don't believe that all of your actions are simply done for the sake of your duties. It's true. It seems I still retain some immature qualities. Oh, by the way, V-Tamer, um... I started playing the first Investigations game on Monday. <laughs> it's been a week. <laughs> and I'm almost finished with the second one. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> I wouldn't call it immature. It was your own personal kindness. Weren't you also distressed when you found out the president had passed away? He 
refuses to acknowledge it was spiritual, and the least spiritual thing he could think of was chess. Yes, it is very unfortunate. <laughs> there is no help, there is only the truth. I'm hoping to finish it today, but I don't know if I will be able to, because the chapters seem rather long. So, worst case scenario, I'll just finish it tomorrow, you know? And also start Apollo Justice, depending on, like, how long it takes me. It is very unfortunate. Why did he have to die? Seems he was crushed by the head of a monster called the Mighty Muzilla. Ah, uh, excuse me. You see, Muzilla is- I Is that true? You mean, the president died at the temporary Muzilla film lot? Yes, that's right. I'm surprised that you know about Muzilla. yes I heard about it from Sebastian. He told me that the movie was being filmed near the Grand Tower. She seems awfully shaken up about it. And I'm also curious about Sebastian, who went missing along with the evidence. <laughs> no, please stay. <laughs> She said she wouldn't talk about the precedent. However, I might be able to get her to reveal her secret through another line of questioning. She is flustered beyond normal. There must be some reason behind it. Where is prosecutor the best? Francisca may have taken over the prosecution in Sebastian's place. However, as long as he still poss possesses some of the evidence, the trial cannot proceed. I intend to carry out a fair trial the prosecution is unable to present evidence, the defendant must be declared not guilty. <laughs> also, apparently I remembered wrong. Edgeworth just talked about talks about the wall behind behind the, the stepladder. I got B Tamer to uh, clarify that for me yesterday. I am a judge. I cannot allow my own personal feelings to let to get in the way. So you're saying you're not the least bit worried about Sebastian's whereabouts? Of course, I am. I am worried about Sebastian as well, but you're worried about Sebastian as well. Wouldn't that mean that there is someone else you're worried about? Any chance? Would that person have something to do with your unnatural behavior? I still believe he is team step ladder, but he is team ladder by spite. <laughs> I still believe that. That's impossible. I I am a follower of the law. I will not be swayed by personal feelings. Hold on, wait, let me... Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was or not. It may be true that those who stand in court have a duty to follow the law. However, we're not superheroes. You and I are only human. It is impossible to completely ignore your own feelings and render an impartial judgment. Uh, it is as you say. As I am now, I cannot hand down an impartial verdict. Judge Courtney, why don't you tell me the truth? I... I... Just what am I supposed to do? For Judge Courtney to become this distraught, I should find out exactly who she is searching for. Until now, she has been wearing the mask of a judge. This time, she should be able to draw out her true feelings. Uh, are you searching for a prosecutor the best? Is the person you're searching for Sebastian, by any chance? When Sebastian learned of his father's true colors, he went into hiding of his own free will. I am worried about him, but this may be a trial he needs to overcome on his own.
since he went into hiding of his own accord, he could return whenever he wanted to. Could it be the person you're searching for is unable to return under their own power? <laughs> oh my god. In regards to that, my lips are sealed. I am unable to talk about it right now. When I think about what might happen to that child if I talked... A child. Could you tell me who you are referring to? <laughs> it's nothing. Please pay it no mind. Judge Courtney's expression has changed. It seems I've managed to uncover a clue. Are you searching for Mozilla? Judge Courtney, tell me who you are searching for. My lips are sealed. That is not something I can talk about right now. Can you try using that clue? Could it be you're searching for that child who has, who has gone missing? Ah! Since you said it was a child, I presume they're of a young age, correct? I simply cannot answer any questions about him. That boy has nothing to do with you or the president's assassination. I don't have enough clues. What? I have to ask about Mozilla? Okay, th I thought that was a joke, but okay. Are you searching for the mighty Mozilla? I don't have the time to play along with your jokes right now. It's not a joke, just a moment ago. You were surprised to learn that the president had been crushed by Mozilla, correct? Th th that was... I was simply surprised by the president's cause of death. To think that he passed away at the temporary film lot, of all places. the way you're talking. It seems you have a problem with where he died. But th that's not true. It's just... For the president to have passed away at a film lot, a place where dreams are made, I just thought it would be better if the movie's cast and crew remained unaware of the truth. So it won't affect the box office? I'm very sorry to say this. However... The movie's cast and crew are already aware of the president's death. They encountered a female staff member and John Marsh at the crime scene. No! Oh, how could it have come to this? Hmm, she seems to react strongly when it comes to the staff of the Musilla film. This could be a useful clue. Now who are you searching for? Okay. Earlier, when Musilla was brought up, it seemed to be a sensitive topic for you. Is that child you spoke of involved with the Musilla movie? Ah! How, how do you know that? You're usually so calm, but you seem rather distraught right now. Please, tell me, who is that child? I understand. If you've come to know this much... I shall prepare myself for the worst. The child I'm searching for is a boy by the name of John Marsh. John, why do you want to know his whereabouts? Well, that much I simply cannot say. Judge Courtney, didn't you say you were prepared for the worst? Even if you don't intend to talk, I am determined to expose the truth. That is my resolve. Why is she searching for John? I must get her to tell me the reason. Could it be that you're a fan of John Marsh? Yes, yes. That's right. I am a fan of John Marsh, the famous child actor who has been called a prodigy. I knew its movie was being filmed in front of the Grand Tower. So the temporary film lot had been on my mind. I see. I suppose a fan would be curious about that. Did you know that John was at the temporary film lot? Yes. Of course I did. He said they would be filming there all day today, and yet... 
It almost sounds as if John himself told you personally. Oh. Doubt he would give his schedule to a mere fan. That's true, isn't it? Please don't pay any mind to that statement. She made another slip of the tongue. She must be really worried about John. So she has spoken with John. This could be a useful clue. Are you acquainted with John by any chance? He is a famous movie star. I doubt there is anyone who doesn't know who he is. I actually hadn't heard of him until I met with him today. That just proves you have much to learn. Allow me to give you a lesson. I know everything about him. My apologies. I seem to have lost my composure. You tend to lose your calm whenever the conversation turn to, turns to John, don't you? Oh. In, in any case, while I may know everything about John, it is a one-sided relationship. I'm try using the clue. I understand you're worried about him, but aren't you a bit too flustered? You told me earlier that you had spoken with John. Doesn't that prove that you are indeed acquainted with him? <gasps> How could I have committed such an indiscretion? It appears that John and Judge Courtney are acquaintances. Acquaintances. <laughs> this could be a vital clue. Actually, we are searching for John as well. Would you happen to have any idea where he might be? Why would you think that I would know where he is? John and I, there is no connection between us. I don't know what kind of relationship you have with John. But at the very least, the two of you must be acquaintances. <laughs> Judge Courtney. Won't you allow us to help you in, in your search for him? Help? No, that won't be allowed. We won't allow it, the so-called goddess of law. The person who knows where that child is. See, finally, I've connected all the pieces of the puzzle. The reason why you cannot easily talk about John. It was because someone kidnapped him. Isn't that right? <laughs> Judge Courtney, I would like to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. This time, I will truly be prepared for the worst. It is just as you deduced. Someone has kidnapped John. As I thought. It was a kidnapping. Still, how is John's kidnapping related to you in any way? John and I are... Mother and child. What? I was unable to learn much about the conversation she had with the president, but... I have learned of John's kidnapping. It was an unexpected result, but with that, it's checkmate. Did you not see that coming? <laughs> I was just like waiting for you to be like, wait, is she, is she John's mom? I was waiting for that the entire time because I got that like first time I played this. I got it like, like halfway through. I was like, oh, wait. What? John is... Miss Courtney's son? No way. I mean, he's already so big. For him to be your... Yes. John is indeed my son. Please look at this. This is a clipping from a magazine. It's an article about John. Do you always carry this around with you? Yes. I always keep it close by. It's like a charm to me. 
It seems the bond that they share is a strong one. Oh no, it froze. <laughs> your your Wi-Fi just hates you. <laughs> really. That's all there is to it. However, are you absolutely certain that he's been kidnapped? Yes, I received a call from the kidnapper just before the trial started. What were their demands? They had only one demand. A not guilty verdict for Patricia Rowland. I see. So that's what happened. Girl, I get you. I get you. We've been there. We've been there. Since there's no evidence, that would make me innocent. Isn't that right, Your Honor? That is correct. The prosecution has not produced sufficient evidence to prove the defendant guilty. As such, I hereby find the defendant, Patricia Rowland. So that's why you were going to deliver a not guilty verdict earlier. I mean, she doesn't know about that though. I am not qualified to be a judge. A judge must be able to remain impartial and composed above all else. And yet, despite this, in the trial just now, I... I was about to hand down a verdict that was led solely by my heart. Judge Courtney. The goddess of law must be furious with me. But I simply couldn't do it. I couldn't hand down a fair, fair verdict if it meant I had to sacrifice my own son. Of course you can't! Okay. Real parent would never abandon their own child. If that makes the goddess of law angry, then maybe the goddess is the one who's wrong. The goddess is guilty! Guilty! Isn't that right, Mr. Edgeworth? Indeed. To declare a goddess guilty. We're responsible for upholding the law, but at the same time, we are only human. I mean both yes and no. But that's because Maya herself like told him that like if if uh, he got a complete acquittal, she would never forgive him. We're responsible for upholding the law, but at the same time, we are only human. Nobody would hand down a verdict that would sacrifice their own child. Thank you very much, Miss Faraday, Prosecutor Edgeworth. However, I cannot simply run away from the courtroom. Judge Courtney, so this is where you've been. It appears it's time. Miss Courtney! My father. He was a prosecutor. Your father? Yes. He stood in court, just like you. Now, with all that has happened, it got me thinking. What if my father had been in the same position as you are right now? If a prosecutor was being coerced into obtaining a guilty verdict. I know. If my life were on the line, my father would definitely come to steal me back. Steal you back? Miss Courtney, why don't you let us take care of it? What? I'm gonna go steal John back for you. As a second yet to sue, I, K for a day, give you my word. <laughs> so the great thief at the sue plans to steal the truth, huh? What say you, Judge Courtney? Will you place your trust in your young in our young great thief? Prosecutor Edgeworth. And if it's alright with you, I wish to help as well. Thank you very much. I know that it's really not my place to ask this of you. But please, do whatever you can. Please save John. You got it. Just leave everything to us. Allow me to leave my cell phone with you. 
You may get a call from the kidnapper at some point. You have my word. I will ensure the safe return of your phone along with your son. But phone. And I will do everything in my power to prolong the trial. But even then, at most, the trial can only last for about two more hours. Two hours, huh? So until 2 p.m. That's our time frame. I must return to court. This fair day, Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave the rest to you. Okay, <laughs> I thought you were taking a break from being the Great Thief. As of right now, the Great Thief Yatagarasu is back in business. Alright, time to put on the gloves and hit the pavement. My first request, after all. Is that so? In that case, we'd better begin our investigation post-haste. If we hope to track down John. Tch, <laughs> where'd he run off to? He might have just gone back home. That's right, I mean, it doesn't look like they're going to get any filming done today. Or he may have run away. We should probably begin our investigation from the front of the Grand Tower. Hey, hold it, Miss Redworth. You're not the one in charge anymore. From here on out, this is a job for a great thief. Which means I'm the leader now. If that's the case, then what am I supposed to do? Mr. Edgeworth, you get to be the first ever great thief's assistant. So I'm a thief's assistant now. Uh, Alright, let's get going. The great thief at the Gotta Sue takes flight once again. I believe it was Golden Sparkly, yeah. Oh, also it had like a... Uh, I, don't, I don't think we have it here. No, we don't have it here. It had like the Musilla, like... What's it called? Like a charm thing. Like a phone charm. That's what it's called. <laughs> here we are. The scene of the crime. Let's get to work. Now stay with me, Miss Redgeworth. Hmm? Say what? Even in the depths of night. Aw, oh, come on. Say the rest with me. Just why would I do that? Because the great thief at the Garasu has arrived on the scene. If we don't say the introduction, it just doesn't feel right. I have no intention of becoming a thief. Ah, oh, fine. Then I'll do it by myself. Even in the depths of night. When no other bird dares to take flight. One alone soars to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief at Agarasu. Yes, Kay, I know you are. I, on the other hand, am starting in <laughs> I'm starting the investigation. <laughs> Tch, you're no fun. We don't have time for fun. We only have until two o'clock. We need to begin making in inquiries immediately. I think we have a photo so we can go right ahead and start asking around. My phone case actually has like um a place for a phone charm. It actually falls with like a, a ring. Yes, the Yatagarasu is a crow. Or a three legged raven, I guess. This. You think we have a photo so we can go right ahead and start asking around. Oh, looky here. Anyways, let's go talk to you here. Hey, buddy, what's wrong? Your face looks so serious. Have you picked up any passengers here today? Oh, I sure did. But it was only one group. What did they look like? It was a pair of men. They were both wearing black. Did you happen to see a small boy with them? Here's a picture of him. Nope. It was just the two guys. I understand. Thank you for your cooperation. I was hoping he would have some more information for us. But I guess not. Thank you for your hard work, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Hmm? I'm not a prosecutor at the moment, but I'll keep quiet about that for now. Thank you. What are you doing here? Sir, I'm on guard duty. Then, 
Could you tell me about the cars that have passed through here today? The only ones that came through here were that taxi and that blue truck. So two different we vehicles came through this place. This is valuable information. Long time no see, Mr. Edgeworth. Y you're... This is Will Powers. He is an action star I met in a previous case. He also played the role of the Steel Samurai, warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. It's been a long time. Nice to meet you. I'm Kay Faraday, a great thief. Some stuff has happened, so now Mr. Edgeworth is my assistant. Nice to meet you. But a thief? And Mr. Edgeworth is your assistant? He doesn't look as much as Wolverine anymore. <laughs> Please, paid no heed. More importantly, I'd like to ask you some questions about the case. Okay. I don't know if I'll be much help, though. Hmm, he's an actor who has been working with John. Maybe a bit sudden, but let's hear what he has to say. I had heard that you were handling the investigation for this case, but... Hmm? Well, that's... I'm not the prosecutor in charge, though. If you're the assistant, then does that mean that Kay is in charge? No, this is just a simple mis- You got a good eye on you! You're completely right! She jumped at the chance. Since I'm in charge here, I'd like you to answer a few questions post-haste. And please be frank. Did anything happen to catch your eye? Ergo, didn't you notice anything? Who is she trying to imitate? Be frank, huh? Well, I feel sorry for the victim, but- can't help but worry about what will happen with the filming from now on. No, that's only natural. Still, I would think that filming would be difficult now. I knew it. This is bad. I can only use this location for a little while longer too. Is the filming almost complete then? Oh, but construction will begin here soon, so we won't be able to film here anymore. We're only using this vacant lot until construction begins. So the rest of the movie will be filmed at Global Studios. Things aren't looking good. There's even some people spreading bad rumors. Bad rumors? Lately a journalist has been coming by repeatedly saying, This film lot's hiding a real monster, I reckon. There ain't no use hiding it. And stuff like that. I have a feeling I know who you're talking about. As it was that phot photographer from before. You're not actually hiding a real monster, are you? Of course not! If there really was one, I'd be out of a job. It seems they're putting a lot of work into this movie. That's because this is our first attempt at making a sequel to an old classic. Global Studios is pouring their heart and soul into this one. I wish they'd put that much effort into making a new Steel Samurai series. Edward, You are so... Sarah, I love you. <laughs> What role are you playing this time, Mr. Powers? I'm playing the mighty Mozilla. You're the main character? Well, much obliged. I'm wearing a full body costume again, so my face won't be seen this time either. I see. That costume sure, sure is cool, though. I want to try wearing it, too. I know. How about next time you let me get, it, get in the costume? Maybe just the horn part? That's... Really possible. You can't get inside the horns. Well, I guess that makes sense. I'm not in the Screen Actors Guild after all. Just like how we want more Ace Attorney content, you know? Like, we're Edgeworth. <laughs> I don't think that's what he means. I would like to ask you some questions about John. John. I heard about it from the girl in the staff. How oh, he suddenly vanished from right in front of you guys. That's just like him. Does he do that a lot? I'd say so. During filming breaks, if you even took your eyes off of him for a moment, he'd be gone. Do you have any idea as to where he might have gone? I don't know, but... I ran into him as he was leaving the film lot. What? Really? Where did John go? 
saw him get in the trailer, but when I was checking the equipment, he was gone again. The trailer, huh? There might still be some traces of him left behind. Mr. Powers, could you show us a trailer? Sure thing. It's a bit of a mess right now, though. Let's take him up on his offer and examine the inside of the trailer. Pieces of film equipment have been placed here. <laughs> Are you filming today? No, we had to stop filming for today. Since the box has disappeared. Box? What is he talking about? Yeah, there was some equipment in that box. I take my eyes off of it for a few seconds and look what happens. So, there's a thief among us. Exactly what was stolen. Nothing much, actually. Just the box is missing. Why would someone steal a box? Personally, I would have taken the stuff inside. They probably wanted the box more than whatever was inside it. Don't they plan to put something inside the box? About John's seat. Ah, oh, it's over there, where that backpack is sitting. Hmm? Something is sticking out of the bag. This is... a tape. Huh? It's a tape for filming. Why does John have one? Did he film something? This might be a clue. Is there any way to check its contents? We have a monitor to look over the footage that was filmed. We can use that. Well then, let's see what's on that tape. This it looks like when John was practicing. John was practicing by himself. <laughs> the monster's footprints can be seen as well. So this must have been recorded last night. He does that sometimes. When he's not happy with his performance, he'll sneak onto the set to, to practice by himself. Wow, he really is hardworking. Sure is. Although he's young, he's a real pr pro. He never rests until he's satisfied. Or are they like, uh, fan cases? And again, I can't say that I approve of him using the equipment without asking. John is able to operate the equipment all by himself. More or less, if it's just basic filming. Huh? What's wrong? Why isn't John on the screen anymore? I think he ran off somewhere just a few seconds before this. Did he go somewhere while the camera was still recording? Oh, interesting. Maybe I'll look into them. The tape ends here. It looks like this was all that was recorded. No one else was on camera except for John. Okay, so in the trailer, rights video. Ah, I see. Hold on, there's certain things that I need. Examine the blue- Oh, I need to examine the blue truck. That's it. Hey, John! Hmm. Guess he's not here. This basket looks pretty suspicious to me, but... It certainly does. Huh? What's wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Why are you touching the truck? The truck's body is cold to the touch. It seems to have been parked here for some time. 
Yeah, haichu. They're like a Japanese like candy. They're like um, what's it called? Like uh, not quite gum, but it's like a chewy kind of uh, candy. You can figure all that out just by touching it? Considering the length of time it's been parked here, the driver must not be nearby. I suppose we won't be able to ask them any questions until they return. Uh, you probably could. I know you can get them in Norway. You just like need to go to like um, um, uh, stores that sell like Japanese stuff. We have like this uh, this store in Oslo that's called Neo Tokyo, and uh, that's where you can get like a lot of like Japanese candy. Yeah, it's taffy. That's it. Thank you. Taffy, toffee, whatever. It's one of them. I don't know the difference between them. Hmm, it's already past 12. Half past 12. I wonder how Miss Courtney and the, and the others are holding up. Yeah, it's sad. It's not Asian markets. You like need to go to like a store that like specifically sells like Japanese stuff. But I am not aware of, like, any Swedish stores, but I bet you can probably find it somewhere. How long will they be able to prolong the trial? You gotta hurry and find John! Oh, I bet there is one in Stockholm somewhere. Indeed. Oh heck no! That ain't how it's done! You ain't gotta catch a scoop like that. S sorry, Chief. What am I always telling you? We're beasts. Scoop-eating animals. It's scoop or starve. No story, no glory. You gotta get fired up. Yes, sir. As expected of my mentor. They're here. It's those noisy reporters. Hey, they came here too. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's go talk to them. Good grief, if we must. If it ain't Mr. Edgeworth, so we meet here, so we meet again. Miss Swift, why are you here? You were set up as a suspect from, for the murder. Still, your involvement with the fake assassination plan remains a fact. You will have to submit to police questioning later. You should know that there is still a possibility you may be charged with some crime. For some reason, my questioning was stopped all of a sudden. After a while, they just let me out and told me I could go home scot-free. It must be some kind of message, saying I need to keep on doing my best out there, I reckon. Well, they did give me a pretty stern warning not to reveal anything about the case. In the official statement released to the public about the assassination attempts. Miss Swift was not involved. That must have been the reason why they let her go. But Miss Edgeworth, attempting to silence Nicole like this... It's like trying to plug a leaky dam with your bare hands. Hmm. She was quick to say something so harsh. I quickly put together the full details of everything I knew before the case, about the case. Sprinkled in some of my own dramatizations and brought, it, brought the art, uh, article to, into a publisher. But... For some reason, I haven't gotten any replies yet. Were they pressured to keep quiet, or were her dramatizations simply too much? Both are probable, so I'm not sure which is true. What information were you trying to collect here at the Grand Tower? Mr. Edgeworth, you still don't get it, do you? If you want to ask a reporter a question, you gotta give her something first. 
Do you mean information that can be used in an article? Bingo! Give me some info that'll make for a good article. If you ain't got something like that, I guess we won't be talking. I also need some information about John. Show her that piece of evidence and try asking her about him. Miss Swift, I'm sorry, but about this photo. I gotta say, I know exactly what's going on. Hmm? What do you mean? You're searching for him, aren't you? That boy. What? Things are still pretty tough for you, I see. Miles Edgeworth, the man of crime. Wherever he goes, dead bodies are sure to follow. Or something like that. It's a terrible reputation to have. Who would have thought? This time, there'd be a kidnapping incident. What? How did you know that? Shh, shh. Could you keep it down a little? This material is top secret. I ain't even told my mentor about it yet. Y'all gotta keep it a secret for me. If she finds out, I'll be a goner. Why do you know? Judge Courtney should, on should have only told us. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I ain't telling that to anyone, not even you, Mr. Prosecutor. Seems this reporter still hasn't learned her lesson. Y you can give me the stink eye all you want. I still ain't telling. D do you know something about it? Truth is, I done saw it myself. A boy being taken away by a couple of men in black. What? Where did they go? That, I don't know. They were too far away, so I lost sight of them. Darn it. But at least we know what the criminals looked like. Yes, a pair of men in black. And then we have the good logic. Sweet. Two men and men in black. We. We've now collected some testimony regarding the culprits. Miss Swift says she, says she saw two men slip away with John. Furthermore, the taxi driver says he picked up two men in his taxi. They must be the same guys! Okay. It's it's true, it's true. Because like literally this game just like picks up like ten days after the, the first game. <laughs> it seems likely. However, there is still a problem. According to the taxi driver, the two men were alone. John wasn't with them. Yeah, you're right. That is a problem. box what if the kidnappers stole the box huh you mean they exactly they took it in order to carry John inside it John is a tiny kid after all then the reason the taxi driver didn't see John was because it's likely he was put in the trunk as the kidnappers luggage but why do they need to go through all the trouble of hiding him Yeah. Really, they just fucking, like, keep this going. And then there is, like, the huge gap between this and Apollo Justice. <laughs> At first, the kidnappers must have intended to abduct him with without being seen. However, they didn't anticipate all the policemen in the plaza. Ever since he got off the plane, he's been busy. Really. He hasn't been able to fucking sit down and just, just like, get a cup of tea. Except, like, he got tea at the, at the museum or whatever. But, like, that doesn't really count because they're true. There was an incident. So, it's all Larry's fault. <laughs> I see. If they tried to just walk away with him, they would have been spotted. Just a mere pre presence of policemen would have been a sizable threat. 
I get it. In that case, we gotta ask the taxi taxi task taxi driver. Taski? Do the two men you told us about earlier have any luggage with them? Yeah, they stuffed a huge box into the trunk. Okay, bye. See ya. And that's that. Those guys must be the kidnappers. Do you remember where you took those men? Sounds to me like something serious has gone down there. Here. If you'd like, I could take you to the same place I took them. Let's do it, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes. Thank you for your help. No problemo. Just leave it to me. That taxi drove way too fast. I don't feel too good. Mr. Edgeworth, are you alright? Your face is pretty pale. I'm fine. The driver said they came to this house's garage. This must be where those two men brought the box. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth! Look at the nameplate on the door! Nameplate? What? Blaze the best. So this is... The chairman's house. Does that mean the one who kidnapped John was Blaze the best? Blaze should have already been arrested, though. Ah, the garage door isn't locked. You really do have a good eye for this sort of thing. It smells like motor oil. Maintaining that motorcycle must be Blaze's hobby. Excuse me, we're coming in. Anybody home? Doing something like this, it's as if we're a couple of petty thieves. Shh, be quiet. Right now, we're great thieves. Have some self-awareness. She scolded me. Nobody's here. For now, it looks like we can get through this without being arrested. This isn't the time to be relieved. Now the real deal begins. Let's go look for treasure. We are looking for John, not treasure. This large box. This must be it. This is probably the box that Mr. Powers said had been stolen. So John was stashed in this box and then transported all the way here. Please don't talk about people as if they are objects. However, if that's the case, there is also a possibility that John is still somewhere in this garage. Okay, let's go look for him. Our honor as the great thief and her assistant depend on it. Good grief. Oh, I found something good! These are mechanics gloves. Why do they say death on them? You wear them during vehicle maintenance or when you're working with machinery. They look really stained with motor oil. However, they are also horribly stained with dirt. Could the gloves have gotten this dirty just from maintaining the bike? Hmm, I don't really like Blaze, but these gloves are pretty cool. Do you think we could come up with some reason to take these with us? When you say it like that, it makes it hard for me to take them as evidence. There are large tools hanging on the wall, such as a sledge ha sledgehammer and a shovel. It's a lot bigger than the gavel Mr. Miss Courtney carries around. If I ever become a judge, I don't want my gavel to be this big. Swinging such a huge gavel in court would be intolerable. Please don't. Ah, and I'll just swing the shovel that's beneath it instead. That has no business being swung in court or elsewhere. Please don't. Hmm? Th there's someone inside! Is it... John? John, we're coming to save you! Eh? This is... You're... S Sebastian! What? Why? <laughs> this is Blaze's house, right? That would mean... Yes, it should also be Sebastian's house. So then, why is he... Okay, go help him out. Our boy, thank you very much. 
If it has to do with ropes, just leave it to Kay. Here I go. A little pull over here and a quick tug over there. Are you alright, Sebastian? I'm not used to joint custody. <laughs> it looks a little worse for wear. Why were you tied up in a place like this? How should I know? You guys don't know anything about me. It's because we don't know. That's why we're asking you. He's completely shut off his heart. Indeed. If it's come to this, I suppose I have no choice but to use that. Ah, you mean... I hate to do this when he's in such a fragile state. It's like kicking a man who's down. Will it be alright? His mind might break if you corner him too much, you know? Yes, I am aware of that. I will try to be careful. Good grief, I wonder how this will turn out. I've never held back against anyone before. Oh my god, this is fucking long! Logic chess. After running, after running out of the meeting room this morning, why would he be here of all places? You guys, you don't know how I feel. Oh my god! Five of them? He's gone through a lot of shock. He must be on the verge of an emotional meltdown. He can't be helped. At times like this, I must quietly listen to what he has to say. No one tells me anything! I'm, all, I'm always the only one being left out like an idiot! Hmm, I should try to answer his questions as best as I can. Considering how fragile he is, I won't have much time to spare. I'll need to ask about his true feelings and try to calm him down post haste. You're a failure as a person! Oh no, sorry. I just read ahead. You're a failure as a person? No! Could you please tell me what's on your mind? You'd listen to me anyways. I can pretend to listen. What's wrong? Normally you'd be shouting right about now. You're serious? You really gonna listen to what I have to say? I can understand the shock you went through after what happened with your father. It wasn't just Pops. This morning, I, I lost everything. Poor baby! <laughs> Everything I have was given to me by Pops. Tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, just what am I supposed to believe in? If you can't believe in others, then at least believe in yourself. You'll need to gain experience on your own. But if you require wisdom, I can lend you a hand. Ever since I got locked up, I've been thinking... Am I too inculpable to be a prosecutor? Uh, incapable? Um, which one was it? You believe in capable is the word you are looking for. Judging your own ability is not an easy task. Sebastian, little by little, you are growing. Sebastian, would you tell me your side of the story? I... I understand. What should I talk about? Hmm, he seems to have calmed down slightly. I'd like you to tell me everything you know about the kidnappers. Now then, tell me what you heard and saw. Why were you tied up in your own home? Why were you tied up in your own home of all places? That's what I'd like to know. I'm the victim here. What would I know? Stop playing the victim. I, I was really scared of being locked up alone, you know? Hmm. Did your abductors happen to say anything to you? I don't really get it, but... One of them said, don't blame us. Blame the owner of this house. The owner of this house. Wouldn't that be Blaze the best? Huh? P Pops? Huh? I get it. Someone who hates Pops must have taken me hostage. No, considering the situation, that seems unlikely. The connection between Blaze and the kidnappers. This could be a useful clue. 
you have any idea who the kidnapper could be. Of course I don't! If I did, I would have told you already. Let me try using that clue. Lazel's behind the kidnapping. Kidnapper can easily use his own home to hold someone ca captive. Sebastian, you were kidnapped by your own father. <laughs> what? It, it can't be. Was he going to kill me because I was a nuisance? Would there be any reason for him to take your life? If his son was found dead in his own garage, Blaze would be suspected immediately. I see. Th then, why was I kidnapped? Kidnapping his, kidnapping his own son, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be after any ransom money. There must be some other reason why Blaze ordered the kidnapping. This could be a useful clue, yes. Do you know the kidnapper's objective? Do you know what the kidnapper's objective was? What are you saying? What else would a kidnapper want besides a ransom? We're tracing that clue. Kidnapping his own son in order to demand a ransom wouldn't make much sense. Yeah, you're right. Did you notice anything strange when you kid when you got kidnapped? Oh, as soon as I answered their question, he just took me away. He asked you a question. Tell me what they asked you. Oh, don't glare at me like that. Um, I think they asked me, do you know Courtney? I see. The pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall into place. Place. And the kidnappers did not intend to kidnap you. Their objective was John Marsh. They were planning to kidnap Judge Courtney's son. In order to have Patricia Rowland declared not guilty. Justine has a son? Warden Rowland gets declared not guilty? I suspect the kidnappers mistook you for John Marsh. Uh, all of this was just a mistake? Wait, maybe that's why back then... Hmm? Did you just remember something? No, it's nothing! I'm useless anyways, just leave me alone already! If this is bad, he might be at his emotional limit. I must get him to tell me what he remember, remembered and try to calm him down as well. Based on how distressed Sebastian looks right now, it must have been quite traumatic. I'll need to help him get back on his feet. I was just like, okay, this, this music is, is very stressful, but what if we make it even more stressful? Oh no! <laughs> what did you remember just now? I about uh, that guy! About me. <laughs> With that guy happened to be Blaze. This is the difference between me and someone who earned his prosecutor title. I've been wanting to ask you, why did you become a prosecutor? What well, does it matter? I'm not fit to be a prosecutor anyways. Baby. <laughs> Say something. You must have some reason for choosing this path, right? No, it's not like that. It wasn't anything special. I became a prosecutor for a really insignificant reason. I knew it. It was just a personal reason. <laughs> just like you, I too became a prosecutor for a personal reason. Huh? Is that true? But you're a really successful prosecutor. I'm sure that Pops, the PIC chairman, would have been more proud of you than me. I see. So you wanted your father's approval. that if I became the best prosecutor, he'd be proud of me. He just wants his dad to like him, I know. That's why I, I just wanted to help out Pops as much as I could. Would you happen to be protecting your father? 
to protect someone like him. Didn't you want to help out your father as much as you could? Uh, just once. I only wanted to be helpful and useful to Pops just this once. That way, I could help him regain his repetition. You seem to be mixing up your words again. The word you're looking for is reputation. Huh? No one's ever told me that before. Your father, who has strayed from his path, continues to add to his crimes. Even knowing that, do you really want things to stay the way they are? But in that case, just what am I supposed to do? You should triumph over your father who has treated you like a fool. You must stop Blaze before he commits another crime. I never thought of it that way. I, I want to triumph over Pops. Somehow, it seems he has calmed down once again. Now's my chance to ask him about Blaze's secret. I will give Sebastian the courage to stand up to his father. Unless there's some connection between your father and Patricia Rowland. I'm sorry, I don't really know. Every tiny bit helps. Can you remember anything at all? Um, I think sometimes they would interact with each other during work, but... But, is there something else on your mind? Apparently, Pops is the one who recommended Roland to be the warden. Oh? Was there a reason for Blaze to recommend her? Probably because... Like me, Pop Pops actually cares about her. Guess nobody likes you at all. <laughs> well, Pops has known her since the first since he first became the chief prosecutor. After all, what was he like when he was the chief prosecutor? Oh, Pops was amazing. He'd look over every single piece of evidence that went through the prosecutor's office. He looked over every single piece of evidence. This could be a major clue. Literally, though. Hmm, hold on, where am I? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, where is the evidence? It seems that the evidence regarding Patricia Rowland never made it to the trial. It's the duty of a prosecutor to watch over the evidence. You should take care of it properly. That's not it. Just listen to what I have to say. I thought, but keep it in the safest place I knew. Please don't tell me you fucking put it like down your pants or something. Uh, what have I done? Hmm. He seems to have become unsettled again. I suppose I should lend him a hand. The place you thought would be the safest. Would that have been in place the best's hands? <laughs> He told me that it would be safer if he took care of the evidence. I'm sorry, but he has betrayed your trust in the, in the worst way possible. Pops, why would he want to hide the evidence? At least it was not his pants. <laughs> Lisa's objective was to have Warden Roland found not guilty by obscuring the truth. Sebastian, you were used by your father. It's possible that Blaze, Blaze the Best has the evidence with him. Furthermore, we still have no idea where John is. I must return to my investigation post haste. However, this is not my fault. What am I gonna do now? Seeing him like this, I can't just leave him be. He is still suffering in the gap between his ideal and reality. He will never move on until he figures out how to live his own life. Sebastian is about to face his greatest trial. Perhaps this is fate. I shall give him the push forward that he needs. Uh, will you walk the same path as your father? That's one. 
Will you continue to ignore the truth? Just like your father. Please stop it already. I don't want your putty. Just leave me alone. I believe pity is the word you're looking for. Oh, really? I also have my own reasons for wanting to speak with you. There was a time when I too did not seek the truth and continued to run away from it. However, thanks to a certain friend, I was able to realize my mistake. That's nice! You're lucky, Mr. Edgeworth! I don't have anyone like that! <laughs> if you have the courage to stand up, I will show you the way. What? Only if you have the will for it, though. I... I don't want to be like Pops! So, he wants to surpass his own father. I understand his feelings clearly now. Do you still intend to continue as a prosecutor? I don't really know. It's not like I became a prosecutor on my own. Because of that, do I even have the right to continue being a prosecutor? Of course not. And whether or not you continue as a prosecutor is something you must decide for yourself. Ah! Only you can determine your path in life. I don't want to stop being a prosecutor. Because if I give up now, I know I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. So he wants to continue to live as a prosecutor. I shall keep his will in mind. Sebastian says that he wants to surpass his father and continue to be a prosecutor. In other words, he wants to be a different prosecutor from his father. It's the first answer he survived at on his own. I'm sure if he has the will, he'll find his way. Oh, that's not the one. It's the what are you going to do now? What do you plan to do from here on? First, I'm returning this red jacket. I'm not fit to wear it. Clothes fake the man. I think that's what Pops used to say. He knew all along I was a fake. It's not fake. The saying is clothes make the man. You are what you wear. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. I've learned something new yet again. Yes. All you have to do now is become a prosecutor who is fit to wear that jacket. Yeah, I'll do my best. Oh, wait, no one will ever make fun of me again. You'll always be made fun of. But how can I get people to accept me? Hmm, what do I do? If I, I don't know what to do. For goodness sake. Don't you remember your own words? They're so cruel. I'm like kind of tempted to like choose them, but I'm like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't be that mean to my baby. I can't. Perhaps his own will can show him the way. As a prosecutor, didn't you want to walk a different path from your father? Certainly, the path you have chosen is not an easy one. Nevertheless, you still chose to live as a prosecutor. In that case, it should be clear to you what you need to do. I still question how I live my life to this day. For you, Sebastian, I found your own answer. So believe in yourself. Prosecutor the best. <laughs> he was mistaken for John and kidnapped by Blaze's underlings. And after his father stole his evidence, he lost his confidence as a prosecutor. The emotions he is going through must be more painful than anything I could imagine. Sir, you witnessed your own father die. <laughs> it's taken longer than I thought. But with that, it's checkmate. Well, that was the last one. It says here, for the last time in the game, it's checkmate. There still is more of this fucking chapter. Oh my god. 
Dashed out of here at full speed. Seems if there is one thing he's the best at, it's running away. Stop! Curses. We're running out of time. It's a quarter after one! <laughs> We should check in with Mr. Shields. I'd also like to know what the situation is like on their end. Mr. De Best ran off again. We'll just give them the new information we discovered. Francisca will take his place. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to be enough. It can't be helped. Since he ran away, there's nothing more we can do. Um, I guess I'll just say it again. If there's no murder weapon, you can't prove the defendant is guilty. Just because we don't have the murder weapon doesn't mean the defendant is innocent. It seems you wish to taste the sting of my whip. Ugh. Mr. Attorney, this trial, how much longer will it take? Because it feels like it hasn't gone anywhere at all for a good while now. Well, sorry, but that stubborn prosecutor over there just doesn't seem to understand. Until I am satisfied. This whip will lash out at you as many times as I see fit. Now she's probably whipped me once for every year I've been alive. How old is Ray again? 36 or something? I remember. But it's not a crevet. <laughs> it's a jabbit. <laughs> Miles, what's taking you so long? No, we're just stalling for time. Uncle Ray can't keep this up much longer. Yes, there's a fox. Actually, like each of those like fluffy parts of the coat is a fox. <laughs> or uh, something, some kind of animal. Whoops, excuse me, phone call. Mind if I take this? I will allow it. Mr. Shields. Oh, Miles, it's you. How's it going over there? You found Sebastian. Oh, and the knife and chisel? It seems he handed the evidence over to Blaze the best. It's very likely that Blaze knows where the whereabouts of the murder weapon. Ex-chairman the best? Why would Blaze... That, I don't know yet. However, there may be some hidden connection between Patricia Rowland and Blaze. I believe we, we had this conversation over Discord, didn't we? Where I sent you that it was actually a jabbit? Or was that Fleur? I don't know. I sent both of you <laughs> the picture of uh, Edgeworth in that Jabba dress, anyways. <laughs> gotcha. In that case, I'll issue a subpoena for Blaze the Best right away. I'll grill him personally. I will continue to search for the missing evidence. And for John as well. Can I forget the Jabba dress? <laughs> well, it'd be like that, I guess. Try to hurry it up, would you? We're at a wit's end over here. It feels like the verdict could be handed down any moment. Understood. How much longer can Judge Courtney bear Courtney's heart hold out? I know she is in a lot of pain. Got to hurry. So, how's the trial going? Blaze will be taking the stand. I don't know how things will turn out, though. He'll do anything from hiding evidence to kidnapping. He really is nothing but trouble. I agree. We should probably take another look at the evidence concerning him. Okay, leave it to me. 
First, here's the latest evidence fresh from the scene. There, the gloves from earlier, although I am certainly curious about them. Anything else? The case files from the IS-7 incident, if I recall, Blaze was also involved in this case, right? Indeed, he was involved in destroying the evidence. For now, let's keep this on hand. <laughs> now then, is there anything else? Of course! Last but not least, we've got this. This is the Atagatasu's badge. Okay. I'm talking about things related to Blaze. Please be serious. But aren't you always going around presenting random evidence too, Mr. Edgeworth? Actually, no. <laughs> I've been following a guy this whole time. <laughs> I know when to present what. <laughs> no, well, that's... That's that's the other man. How do you know about him? <laughs> hmm? Isn't that... Sebastian? Huh. What are you doing? What are you doing here? Ah! He, he ignored us. He came out of the Grand Tower. What was he doing in there? Let's go investigate what Mr. DeBest was up to. Yes, let us go. I'm thinking of my other half. Hmm, the hatch is open. It might be Mr. DeBest who opened it. Did Sebastian come in here? Mr. Edgeworth, over there! The safe's open. Did he come here to open that? Let's examine it thoroughly. There's something inside the safe! Let's go ahead and have a look. There are some documents in here. Hmm. It's just a bunch of papers and... Huh? There's a photo here too. Hmm? This is a picture of... Huh? Th th that's Mr. Knightley. Or is Knightley the president's bodyguard? Why is this picture here? And what are all these papers for? I don't know. We will have to read the documents to find out. I'm all but certain there is a connection between Knightley and Dogen. Dogen's chess partner, whose identity remained unknown until now, was actually Knightley all along. That is proof enough. Tomorrow, I shall interrogate him in the warden's office. I'll get him to confess that he's one of Dogen's henchmen. The thing he laid to rest near the flower bed twelve years ago. You simply must retrieve it. This seems to be a report about Knightley. Not to mention, it was apparently written before Knightley was killed. Morris Knightley was murdered while he was being interrogated in the warden's office. Why are you running? <laughs> Judging from the contents, this document was probably written by Patricia Rowland. I knew it. The question, however, is who this report was addressed to. Oh, the owner of the safe is... The conductor. Blaze the best. So this proves that Miss Rowland and Blaze are connected. Indeed. However, it's not just the two of them. Huh? Blaze the best and Patricia Rowland were searching for Dogen's henchmen. Sir Han Dogen! That dog love and assassin! This means that there is a hidden connection between the three of them. I wonder what it could be. I don't know, but it must be related to this case. Huh, there's some other stuff in here that I remember seeing. Hmm, there's something on his finger. Let's have a closer look. It looks like an expensive ring. Don't steal it. What? I didn't do anything yet. It's Horace Knightley's. It's Horace Knightley's. The chessboard and the ring, all of his possessions are inside this safe. So basically, all of this stuff is evidence from that prison case. Correct. Then, the knife and chisel that vanished might be in here too. Let's see. Mr. Knife, Mr. Chisel... Hmm, they're not in there. I guess this is all just Mr. Knightley's stuff. I see. That's too bad. Where's Knightley? He's dead. It's worth. This game isn't over yet, you hear me? Hi. Hi. 
However, the game is not over yet. Unless I can see it through to its end. Hold on, wait, can I take a look at it? Like, it's... No, I can't take a look at his mementos. Okay, cool. Um... Young lady, good sir, might I interest you in some cotton candy? Hmm? There is also ice cream, if that's what you prefer. You! Sh Shelly the killer! It's good to see you are well, Miss Redworth. What are you doing in a place like this? As you can see, I am selling cotton candy. Could you care for some... Would you care for some heavenly cotton candy? Even sweeter than death, one bite will send you straight to heaven. It's definitely not something I'd want to buy from the killer. The meaning of my message. Have you understood it? I congratulate you on resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? <laughs> the assassin business is slow. Have you been spying on us this whole time? Spying? Heavens no. I was simply watching over you. Well disguised as a cotton candy salesman. It's not the exact same thing. What is this man's objective? Were you the one who murdered the president? No. The contract with my client has already expired. President Huang is a bit of a celebrity in the world of assassins, you see. Over the years, many attempts on his life were made, and yet... He stubbornly lives on. He is a robust man, surrounded by flawless security. He even employs body doubles. Robust. That president. Return seems more apt. However, it seems this time the president's security wasn't exactly flawless. Mr. Rook had only just prevented your previous assassination, but this time... I did not kill him. It is not my principle to kill needlessly. I am also grateful to Rook, a worthy adversary who was connected to me by fate. Thanks to that man, I did not kill a target who had no value to be killed. Thanks to Rook preventing this assassination. What does he mean? My client deliberately gave me a fell false target. It was a betrayal most foul. I am now searching for my client. In all likelihood, it is the same person you are looking for. Is he saying that his client murdered the president? Just who is this person you are referring to? I myself am not allowed to say. It would be a violation of the rules. I cannot disclose the identity of my clients. For to do so would create a problem of trust with my other clients. This is precisely why I am personally searching for them myself. What are you going to do when you find your clients? Of course, they shall be rewarded with the punishment most befitting of a traitor. What? Well, uh, that person, what will happen to them? I will leave that up to your imagination. It certainly won't be anything pleasant. Oh yes. I will tell you just one more thing. Three days ago, Sir Han Dogen escaped from prison. What? Three nights past, Dogen's solitary cell was found vacant. It was almost as if he knew I would come to pay him a visit. He visited Dogen's cell. Could it be that the person the killer is searching for is... Well then, if you'll excuse me, I must get going. Let us both do our best in tracking down that person. Listen, this, this case is just insanity. Really. So the killer and Dogen, these two assassins. Hmm? The sound is... Mr. Redworth! Judge Courtney's cell phone is ringing! To be John. Mr. Edgeworth, how are you doing? It sounds like they're using a voice changer. Who is this? Someone you've been searching for. The one in the red hood. Red hood. 
You're the person who ambushed Kay. Brilliant deduction. I'd expect no less from a prodigy prosecutor, Cyrus. Prodigy prosecutor such as yourself. Mr. Edgeworth, I want to listen in on this too. Very well. I'll put it on speaker. Well, I must say that I didn't expect the girl to get amnesia. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? That's not all, you see. Hmm, perhaps I should let you in on this, Mr. Edgeworth. Actually, I was the one who ordered Blaze the Best to kill Jill Crane. What? This must be the person the killer spoke of. I really should thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You have no reason to thank me. Oh, you haven't noticed? My, that's troublesome, you know. I wanted you to catch Blaze for me. So I took dear little Kay. What? If Kay was suspected, I knew you would investigate the case. And I was sure that the great Miles Edgeworth would be able to catch Blaze. It was all according to my plan. And, you know, I get the feeling that you have the wrong idea. So let me clear something up. Blaze the Best wasn't the one who kidnapped Miss Courtney's son. You. What do you know about the kidnapping? You and Miss Courtney are really quite alike, you know. She even came to visit you in the detention center and got all friendly with you. How could this person know something like that? Judge, Judge Courtney was supposed to have visited me during the using the detective's name. I bet you're wondering how I knew about the kidnapping, right? It's quite simple, really. It's because darling little John is in my care right now. What? Huh? You seem surprised. If only I could see the look on your faces. Quickly, little Kay. You have to hurry and steal him back. You wouldn't want to tarnish the Atakarasu's name on your first job, would you? You even know it's my first job? Why does this person know everything in so much detail? Well, I suppose I can't blame you for your mistake. It seems Blaze was after John as well, you see. So there were two kidnappings. He's such a fool, you know. Kidnapping his own son instead? Is John there with you? If he is, then I would like to hear his voice. Hmm, he's here. But I'm afraid I can't do that. You see, he's asleep right now. In that case, there's no way for us to know if you really kidnapped John or not. Hmm. I suppose you don't have to believe me if you don't want to. What is your objective? Is it to get Patricia Rowland declared not guilty? A not guilty verdict, huh? I couldn't care less about that. So his objective is different from Blaze's. I think I'll keep my objective a secret for now. Well then, I must be going. I hope you enjoy yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. I don't think you can get away with this. Come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. That is, if you can bring me to justice. But I highly doubt that. <laughs> Who in the world was that? I don't know. We don't have enough information. Darn it. We're totally clueless. Meanwhile, they seem to know everything about us. Know everything about us? Okay, you're right. Thinking about it, it is strange. How does the culprit know so much about us? It's so weird. I mean, they even know about the kidnapping. We must figure out how the culprit was able to obtain that information. I must recall, what exactly did that person know? And Miss Courtney are really quite alike, you know. She even came to visit you in the detention center. And got all friendly with you. You wouldn't want to tarnish the Atagarasu's name on your first job, would you? Do you even know it's my first job? You seem surprised. If only I could see the look on your faces. That's it. By analyzing our conversation with the culprit. I figured it out, Kay. I know the source of this person's information. What? Really? In all likelihood, this person probably... I believe it is highly likely that we have been bugged. B bugged? If you recall that, what that person said... You seem surprised. We, only <laughs> we already went through that like twice. <laughs> If they couldn't see our faces, that means they weren't talking, taking pictures, or following us. But then, 
must have planted a bug somewhere. Could it be in my stuff? Or was there anything they could have had a chance to bug? There must be a hint somewhere in our conversation just now. That's right. The person knew something they shouldn't have. The conversation between Judge Courtney and me and myself in the visitor's room. Judge Courtney. Hush. Please have a seat. The only evidence I had with me at the time was... Where was the bug planted? Where was the bug... Blood bug, bug planted? A badge. Okay, may I see your badge? May I have to get a Swiss badge? No way! Why not? Mr. Edgeworth, just because you became a great thief's assistant doesn't mean you're ready to wear this badge yet. That's not it. It's very likely that the bug that the that the bug was that a bug was planted in it. What? In my badge? Let's take a closer look. Huh, this is it seems I was right. How did you know? The person had been in contact with you. You mean, when I was knocked unconscious? Yes, that's why I thought one of your possessions might have been bugged. However, that person also overheard my conversation with Judge Courtney. Even though that conversation took place in the visitor's room. With just the two of us. Ah, so you were holding onto it at that time. Exactly. All the other evidence had been taken away from me. Only the Yatagata Suis badge had remained with me. So this creep's been listening in on us the whole time. Indeed. That must be how they knew about all the information we collected. Does that mean they're also listening in on this conversation? Most likely. Hey, Buster! Okay. Eavesdropping is for cowards! Why don't you come out of here and fight us fair and square? Hmm? What was that sound just now? Ow! Huh? That's... Nicole! Honestly, y'all scared the bejesus out of me. Your voice was so loud there, little missy. I was so surprised I don't feel flat on my behind. I'm... I'm sorry. What were you getting so riled up for? You gotta hear this. It really grinds my gears. Yes, yes. Okay, please just leave it at that. Unless you want to make tomorrow morning's headlines. Ah! It was close. Aw, oh, shucks. Don't be such a stick in the mud. What's wrong with letting a gal open her heart and spill the beans? For now, I'll turn the bug off. So, did you find the kidnappers? Miss Swift, was the boy you saw being kidnapped? This boy in the photo? Hmm, nope. They ain't nothing alike. He had a more stupid looking face. And was wearing a colored school uniform. I, th I thought so. And again, we were led astray by this woman's testimony. We will have to conduct our investigation all over again. So we're back where we started. Are there any new leads? There's only 20 minutes left until 2 o'clock. Will we be able to make it... Make it in time? Oh my god, there's still so much more. Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Edgeworth! About that phone call just now. Wasn't there a strange sound at the end? A strange sound. I don't think you can get away with this. Come and get me. I'm looking forward to it. That is, if you can bring me to justice, but I highly doubt that. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Now that you mention it, it sounded like an explosion. It might be a hint to establish the culprit's whereabouts. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. The sound of an explosion, huh? Hmm. I would appreciate it if you stopped eavesdropping on us. Mr. Prosecutor, you're as stingy as ever. 
stingy. First, let's see what she has to say. All my hard works helped move the case forward. I reckon it's all in a good day's work. I'm not so sure about that. You've been chasing after an entirely different person. Indeed, it seems she did not properly examine the photo earlier. What now? Was my info really all that bad? No, some of the blame also falls on us for relying on a dubious information source. Source. It's time for us to regroup and start over. Could you hold on a sec? If you think I'm staying quiet after being called a dubious source, you got another thing coming. Fine then. Guess I'll just have to tell you about the scoop I've been saving. You've been saving? A scoop? Although I'm not expecting much, let's hear it. What is this scoop of yours? It's Moozilla. I have decisive evidence that, it, that the mighty Moozilla exists. Okay, let's go, okay. Hold up! I'm being serious. Y'all might not believe it, but it's true. We don't have much time, but I guess there's no other way. Would this decisive evidence of yours be something you recorded on that tape recorder? That's Mr. Edgeworth for you. You're good at figuring things out, aren't you? It's the sound of Moosella spewing out fire. This place nearly became a sea of flames. If you say so. D don't make that face. If you think I'm lying, then have a listen for yourself. Ready? Here comes the flame. How was that? Hmm, it's hard to tell over your shouting, but if you say so, I guess it could be flames. Miss Swift, did you truly witness these so-called flames? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't really see it with my own two eyes. On account of, um, I wasn't actually there at the time. If Muzilla had appeared, wouldn't you have noticed no matter where you were? Um, well, Hal was a wee off and was using a slightly unusual recording method, so... Hmm, could you explain to me this recording method in more detail? Uh, I guess I just dug my own grave. Truth is, I was aiming for a scoop, so I did me some wireless wiretapping. Wait a minute, wireless wiretapping? If there's no wires, how did you tap them? Okay, please don't concern yourself with the semantics. She was simply intercepting wireless communications and listening in without permission. I've been spending the last few days scoping out the Grand Tower with my mentor. So you were investigating the black market auctions. In that case, you naturally would have tapped the immediate area surrounding the Grand Tower. You betcha, but right then and there, I hear an ear shattering roar. Finally, Muzeli appears. My heart is pounding and I feel him drawn near. So everything except the sound is just her own per personal like, impressions, right? In the end, it seems that you didn't actually see anything. Well, I reckon writing is more my thing. Anyways, as I continue turning, tuning into the situation, little Miss K over there almost shatters my eardrums. He's dropping us for cowards. Why don't you come out here and fight us fair and square? Hmm? What was that sound just now? Hmm, I see, Miss Swift. When you were eavesdropping, you were surprised by Kay's voice and fell over. In other words, you did not hear her voice directly. You heard it via the radio waves emitted by the bug, did you not? What? Th then does that mean the one who planted the bug on me was... I, I was just eavesdropping. I would never stoop to bugging nobody. Miss Swift, do you mind if we borrow that tape for a while? Uh, just do what you please already. Mr. Edgeworth! Mr. Keys, Miss Berry. D did you find him? Not yet. Just where could John be? John? Uh, no, no, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. We don't know anything about the kidnapping. Regarding Sebastian, we found him not too long ago. Really? That's great! Thank you so much. Now I won't be arrested again. I 
as expected of Mr. Edgeworth. How did you find him? Naturally, it was all thanks to, the, to his powers of logic and reasoning. Actually, it was just a coincidence. Mm. I guess we weren't any help at all, were we? Don't be silly. Of course you helped. Really. Thanks a lot. Where were you guys searching, Simon? It was a bit far off, but we searched around the Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum. So they were by the shore. There were a lot of people at the event there, so I thought he might have gone as well. An event? Sounds like fun. Is it a festival? I want to go too. It was a lot of fun. There were food stands, fireworks, and much more. Simon got worn out by all the people in the crowd pretty quickly, though. You didn't have to tell them that. It's settled. Once we wrap up this case, let's all go there. Actually, I'm not supposed to talk to you just yet. Why are you running away? Detective Gumshoe. Well, Mr. Redgeworth gave up his prosecutor's badge. I just didn't know what to do. Detective Gumshoe, don't follow me. And then I began to think. Mr. Redgeworth isn't a prosecutor anymore. Does that mean I'm no longer a detective? That's not true. Even without Miss Redworth, I'm still a detective. And investigating is my job. Detectives don't investigate just for the sake of prosecutors, pal. That's why, even if I'm on my own, they won't stop investigating. So, you've been investigating by yourself. And perhaps at that time. You should thank your former subordinates. He gave me some valuable information which may save Kay for a day. Detective Gumshoe did. So Jill Crane's autopsy report. I went to the detention center to see how Kay was doing. That's when I heard. You get to where I am. You can just create your own truths anytime you want. Kay for a day is the culprit. That was the truth that I simply manufactured out of thin air. <laughs> Good, very good. That face, that expression. You heard that conversation. That's right. And that's why I looked over the evidence again myself, sir. Gummy, that's amazing. So it was you who saved me. Okay, I'm really glad you got your memories back. Thank you. You get it now? I could investigate on my own. Gummy, don't run away. You've already proven that you can investigate on your own. After all, you saved me. Detective, I need your help. Currently, I'm not a prosecutor, nor am I much of anything else. Even so, I will pursue this case. I ask you not as a prosecutor, but as a friend. Detective Gumshoe, will you help us? Please, cut it out, sir. Come me! Okay, I get it. I get it, pal. I can't bear to see Mr. Edgeworth bow bowing his head to me like this. Come me! Thank you, detective. What do you want me to do, sir? Detective Gumshoe, please tell me what you found, found in your investigation so far. Roger, leave it to me, sir. I have three things to report. First up, it's about Kay's clothes that were, that were sent to the crime lab. Traces of an extremely powerful sleeping drug called Sleepy ZZZ were found on them. So that means after Kay was drugged at Gord Lake, she was brought to the roof of the Grand Tower. That's right, sir. Now for the item number two. Footage from the security camera at the Grand Tower's elevator. 
with footage that captured President Huang and Judge Courtney going up to the roof. Oh yeah. <clears throat> the elevator was generally the only way to get to the rooftop. And if the elevator was used, the person who used it would be caught on camera. Exactly. In other words, if you look over the footage from a couple of days ago, you should be able to see an unconscious K being carried up to the roof. Then, Kami, does that mean you... I checked out all the footage from before the incident two days ago on Fast Forward. I see. And the results? Well, actually, nothing came up, sir. K never showed up on the tape at all. That was unexpected. I guess it won't be so easy. How was K brought up to the roof of the tower? I should take a moment to carefully consider the possibilities. Well then, let's hear your third and final report. Yes, sir, last but not least, the most important thing to report. I'm so happy to be able to investigate with you again, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm gonna give it all give it my all to arrest the culprit. That's all, sir. Hm, I apologize for putting you through so much to take to gumshoe. However, what was your most important report? Well, that was your most important report. It had nothing to do with the case at all. I would have preferred something that's actually useful. <laughs> Merciless attitude. As the Mr. Edgeworth I know, sir. A young boy has been kidnapped. I want you to help us search for him. Search for him. A kidnapping, sir? The victim is a boy by the name of John Marsh. Ah, oh, that kid with the horns. Yes, do you know about him? I saw that boy myself, sir. Is that this morning? That's okay, you go to sleep. I have to... Uh, I will upload it later. <laughs> That's right, you came out of that trailer over there. And then... You walked towards the garbage pickup area. The garbage pickup area? It's right over there, pal. That's where all the trash from the Grand Tower's offices is collected. I don't know what happened after that, since I left the place around then. It seems we must investigate the garbage pickup area. Kami said John headed towards the garbage pickup area. Indeed, there must be there might be some traces of him left behind. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to get to the hacking milk. There we go. The milk carton is... It's the one John was drinking out of. There's no mistake. Something must have happened to John here. The garbage pickup time is at 11am, so that's why there's no trash. When I looked here earlier, the place was overflowing with garbage, sir. Looks like today is the day when bulk waste is collected during the garbage pickup. There really were a lot of bulky items placed here, pal. The garbage trucks compact or can crush any kind of garbage to dust. No, it seems the case of bulk waste. In the case of bulk waste, it is transported as as is without being crushed. Huh. Why do you know about how, why do you know about how bulk waste is disposed of, Mr. Edgeworth? Huh, maybe Mr. Shields, in order to accomplish his Mr. Edgeworth acquisition plan, sent him something like a moving process instructional brochure. There are times when you're so sharp. It's scary. Although they're few and far between. Combined with Detective Gumshoe's testimony. The chances are high that John was attacked at the garbage pickup area. It was here. There wouldn't be many witnesses. But why would John have come to a place like this? It would be natural to think that he came here to throw something away. We have no way of knowing since the garbage truck has already collected everything. But the milk is up behind though, but whatever. First it came through and garbage pickup area.
The only vehicles that came through the plaza this morning were the taxi and a blue truck. Mr. DeVest was kidnapped in the taxi. Yes, meanwhile, John was attacked in the, in the garbage pickup area. And the garbage was collected from there at 11 a.m. Ah, I got it, sir. The blue truck was actually... That's right. The blue truck that came through the plaza was a garbage truck. However, be that as it, as it may, the officer who gave us this information made no mention that the blue truck was a garbage truck. Talk about careless! How could anyone mistake a garbage truck for a normal truck? That's not it, Kay. Today was the day for the collection of bulk waste. I suspect it was a standard truck without a trash compactor that came by to collect the trash. John was taken away by this garbage truck. And where do garbage trucks go? To the dump, of course. Hold up! The culprit was disguised as a garbage collector, right? And the truck was probably fake, too. How do we know they really went to the dump? No, the garbage truck should have been real. Eh? Why's that? That will be made clear if you simply take a look at the garbage pickup area. This shows that the garbage truck is John. Mm hmm. There's something important there. Okay, that's not it. If it wasn't a real garbage truck, we wouldn't have been able to collect all trash. Yes. Let me even fucking. <laughs> the lock. Obviously. The garbage pickup area is locked. Huh? Only a real garbage collector could have unlocked it to collect the trash. Precisely. We should assume that a genuine garbage truck was used. For example, the kidnapper could have put John into a large cardboard box. If the box was mixed in with the rest of the bulk waste. Garbage collector would have carried John without away without even knowing it. Exactly. The culprit would then lie in wait at the garbage dump. And if they said I threw it away by mistake, the box would be returned to them. Hmm. Any garbage dumps nearby? Let's see. Huh? There's two of them. Dusk and dawn. So which garbage dump was it taken to? there be a hint in any of the information I hold? Hmm. Now we talk to Simon. At any rate, I am glad you were able to find him so quickly. Why is that? The truth is, our soccer soul is about to sh start soon. <laughs> So I don't know when we would be, would have been able to help out with the search much longer. Hmm. Sorry to burden you with this when you also needed to prepare for your performance. No, no, it's okay. Please don't worry about it. After all, I also didn't want to get arrested again. I'm so relieved you were able to find him, Miss Ragworth. Yeah, but the warden still hasn't been declared guilty yet. What? So you're saying there's still a chance I might be arrested? No way, no way, no way! Okay, please don't tease him. And now we can go to logic. Sound of explosion. Event at Coliseum. Mr. Keys, didn't you say that there were fireworks at the Coliseum earlier? Huh? What about them? Were those fireworks set off during the day? Yeah, even just while we were there, a bunch of them were set off. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? That explosion sound we heard at the end of the kidnapper's phone call. Could very well have been the fireworks. Huh? I don't think you can get away with this. Come and get me. Yeah, I know. For the sound to have been picked up by the phone, it must have been fairly loud. So that means the culprit was near the Colosseum. Even so, I bet the fireworks could be heard in lots of places around the Colosseum. 
Indeed, it would be impossible for us to search the entire area by ourselves. If only we could ha we could have the police lend us a hand. A which garbage dump and near the Colosseum. That's Dusk or Dawn, I don't remember. Based on the explosion sound we heard from the kidnapper's phone. We know that John is being confined someplace in the vicinity of the Colosseum. It's Dawn, okay. One of the garbage dumps is right next to the Colosseum. John was almost certainly taken there. In which case, the place he is being confined to must also be somewhere close by. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Could I ask you to search the area around this garbage dump? You don't have to ask me like we're strangers, sir. It feels so distant. Please just order me around like you normally do. Are you sure, Detective? Right now I'm not a prosecutor. And I tell you, sir? Detectives don't just investigate for the sake of prosecutors. You have my thanks, Detective. Okay, now we're almost at the end of this fucking chapter. Mr. Edward, look! It's almost time! Yes, it would be best if we hurry. They should also be at their limits. Detective Gumshoe, I'm counting on you. We're still at the fucking beginning part! This is just the second part! Ugh. Leave it to me, sir. This may be an, an unofficial investigation. But I'll call in all my pals from the station to help. I'll help too! Stealing John back is my job after all. I will be returning to the courtroom. I might be able to draw out some more time. Okay! Well then, even in the depths of night. Hmm, the clock just struck two. We have to hurry. This is chapter two, yes. Yes, sir. Huh, my introduction! When no other bird dares to take flight! Oh well, if it isn't former Prosecutor Edgeworth, he's the best. Witness, face forward, we're not done talking yet. Like I said, you see, why exactly would I have needed to help that person out, Your Honor? You know, it's a crying shame, having a beautiful woman declared guilty. Honestly, it brings tears to my eyes. But you see, there's no reason for me to go out of my way to hide evidence just to save her. However, we still have the testimony of your son, prosecuted the best. He testified that he handed the evidence over to you. Hmm, well, I haven't the slightest clue what he was talking about. I simply can't imagine why Sebastian would have said something like that, you know? Objection! What if there is evidence that shows your connection with Warden Rowland? Hmm, and just what do you think you're doing, former Prosecutor Regworth? I was under the impression that you were no longer in any position to stand in court. My own Edgeworth! How dare you barge into my prosecutor's bench! Francisca, I'm sorry. I need you to land, lend me the court, the bench for a little while. What are you saying? Judge Courtney, I have brought vital evidence related to this case. Your Honor, please allow me to testify. <laughs> She'd never allow it. Objection. Courtney Pie, Uncle Ray also asked that he be allowed to testify. There are no objections from the prosecution either, right? Just grabs the bench and runs. Understood. The prosecution also has no objections. Objection. There's no way you can allow something like this, you know? Such high-handed methods. Surely are enough to warrant being held in contempt of court. Wouldn't you say, Courtney? As long as John is still in danger. Judge Courtney cannot rule against the warden. I must convey to her somehow that the search for her son is progressing. Judge Courtney, I ask that you have faith in me and my assistant. Now that you mention it, where exactly is she? She's currently out searching for the most important piece of evidence. It's a waste of time. 
There's no such evidence. Are you stalling for time? How disgraceful. Objection. Most important piece of evidence, huh? Courtney Pie. I don't really know what that evidence is, but I think we should have faith in her. After all, even if she may not look like it, she is still the great thief Yatagarasu. Somehow, it seems that Mr. Shields understands. Judge Courtney, we've already determined the general location of that evidence. It's only a matter of time before she steals the evidence back. We're talking about your son, by the way. I understand. Then I shall give you special permission to testify. How is she sitting on the chair? I say as if I, I sit, like, normally on a chair. Thank you, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. This vital evidence that you have found, please present it to the court. Please the best and Patricia Rowland are somehow connected. She's sh sitting on the edge. She's shitting. No, but it's, it's because like her, her sprite is like sideways. So they didn't like make like a front facing um, sprite for her, which is why she sits weirdly on the chair. Allow me to present the evidence that proves it. Which piece of evidence shows the relationship shows the relationship between Patricia Rowland and Blaze the Best? Report on Nightly. Yeah. Ooh, ah. This document contains a, contains a detailed report regarding the interrogation of a certain man. A certain man. A man being the late horse Nightly. And the one who. <laughs> I just realized his fucking name. Sounds like horse nightly. <laughs> but also, it also sounds like horse, as in the animal, you know? And uh, he is the knight. So, yeah, the knights are horses. That means there was the interrogation where, that's right, Patricia Rowland murdered Knightley in the aftermath of the interrogation. And that very interrogation has been recorded in this written report. That definitely sounds like vital evidence. Miles Edgeworth, just now, you referred to that document as a written report. Now, just who in the world was that report written for? I thought you might ask that, Francisca. And that's precisely what is most important about this report. We found this document inside the safe in the storeroom on the 51st floor on the Grand Tower. The 51st floor? The storeroom for the Black Market Auction? Indeed. And the conductor of the auction was you, Blaze the Best. You received a report about the victim from Warden Roland. In the face of this evidence, can you still say you have no connection to this case? In regards to that, I refuse to answer. What? It has yet to be proven in court that I was the conductor of the black market auction. Oh? Have you already forgotten the events of this morning? I believe I I had already proved it back then, did I not? I would not deny that I was being bested by you. That I was bested by you. However, now was at the crime scene. Who knows if the results will be the same in court? An acquittal is still possible, you see. Until it's been proven in court that I am the conductor of the black market auctions. You can't prove that document was addressed to me. Your logic is twisted. That's not very nice, you know. My logic isn't twisted, is it, Courtney? Don't you feel the same way? It was quite unlike you to allow former Prosecutor Edgeworth's statement just now, you know. It saddens me, you see, that you would fail to uphold the law as a judge should. In fact, I'm so upset by this, I may have no other choice but to use my last resort, you know. 
Don't burn down the courtroom. <laughs> Courthouse, I mean. It is as you say. Something that has not been proven in court does not merit any deliberation. I will have to overrule Mr. Edgeworth's claim. <laughs> as I thought, until John has been rescued. See? The truth at the scene and the truth in the courtroom are two very different things. So you're saying the truth can be distorted in court as long as it's for your sake. What a horrible thing to say. I'm not distorting the truth or anything like that, you know? He was literally in the, in the detention center up until now. If she believes her son is in trouble, for as long as she believes so, he has power over her. If a not guilty verdict is handed down, then that becomes the truth. That's all it is, you see. It's useless. There's nothing we can do unless the missing evidence turns up. Now then, Courtney. To deliver a not guilty verdict and let's get this over with. After all, that evidence isn't gonna show up anytime soon, you know. Objection. Sebastian! Who, who raised an objection just now? Sebastian? <laughs> Bobs! Sebastian. <laughs> Why did you come back here? No, of all times. Sebastian, what is the meaning of this? Just where do you... Where were you? And what have you been doing since you abandoned your own trial? I, I'm sorry, I was... Um... Such an act is unbecoming of a prosecutor. You should be ashamed. I, um... Well... Sebastian, I still don't get it, you know? This court is no place for a sniveling child such as yourself. Pops, I... I... I've come to present new evidence, Your Honor. So, so, please, let me take my place back at the prosecutor's bench. Sebastian, I didn't think he would come back. Objection. <laughs> What's all this now? What's all this now, Sebastian? You don't seem at all like your normal self. <laughs> Pops! Hmm? Come now. What's the matter? We don't want Daddy to play with you. Is that it? Well then, why don't we just head on back home? R Return to the witness stand! What's wrong? You're shaking like a leaf. Your Honor, the prosecutor's prosecutor officially in charge of this case has just arrived with new evidence. The trial is still in session. In light of this, shouldn't we continue with the proceedings? Naturally, the defense has no objections, Your Honor. I'm sure the defense attorney originally in charge would say the same. The prosecution has no objections either, Your Honor. Continue with the proceedings. That won't be necessary. Isn't that right, Courtney? He still believes that he was the one who kidnapped John. As long as John still hasn't been found, Judge Courtney will remain bound by Blaze, and nothing else will change that. Th th that sound is cell phone. Hmm, my phone as well. Eh? Uncle Rain's, Ray's phone is also... Mr. Edgeworth! Mr. Shields! You found John, sir! We rescued John! Excellent work, detective. That kid was the most important piece of evidence. No, sorry. Kid was the most important piece of evidence, right? We need to go, Kay. <laughs> I wanted to spread the word quickly, so I had everyone call. Judge Courtney, it's for you.
gets? I see. I'm... I'm so glad you're safe. Make sure you properly thank everyone, okay? Be careful, and come home safe. Let's go! Let us resume the proceedings. Fuck them up! Now that I may once again swing my gavel to my heart's content. <laughs> You're kidding, right? This is just a sad joke, you know. Witness, this is no joke. Please return to the stand. Prosecutor do best as well. Promptly return to your seat at the prosecutor's bench. Y yes, your honor. Sebastian the best. <laughs> yes, Miss von Karma. I leave the rest to you. Huh? Going up against your own father. It won't be easy. I shall observe how things pan out. From the gallery. Now then, allow me to ask once more. Is the prosecution ready? Prosecutor the best. What is this new evidence that you wish to present? A missing knife and chisel, your honor. Let's fucking go! You mean they've finally been found? Prosecutor the best, is this true? The, the knife and chisel. I wasn't able to find them. I searched and searched, I really did, but... It was already too late. Too late? What do you mean? I remembered this morning when I passed by Pops in the gar garage, at, garage at home. He was holding something wrapped in a newspaper. Pops, where are you going? Ah, Sebastian, just taking out some trash. Didn't you say? That moment, I heard it. The faint sound of a bell. Could that sound have been, by any chance? The bell attached to Dorgan's chisel. In other words, you're saying that the witness threw away the evidence. I searched for it, but I didn't make it in time. I'm sorry. Where exactly did you search for it? The garbage dump. I went to the garbage dump and searched everywhere. I thought the evidence Paul threw away might had to be there. Hmm? Isn't that Sebastian? What are you doing here? Oh! He ignored us. So at that time, he had gone to the garbage dump. But, but... This was all I could find. This is... It smells rather peculiar. Now that you mention it, there's kind of a funky smell coming from you as well. What, what do you expect? I was digging through garbage! And what of the knife? I think it's buried somewhere in that giant mountain of trash. But I couldn't find it by myself. I understand. I shall accept this into evidence. <laughs> well done, Sebastian. Never betray my expectations, you know. You search so desperately through the garbage, and that's all you have to show for it. Aw, <laughs> oh, what a tearjerker. I'm tearing up already. Objection. It's a bit too early for tears, don't you think? We haven't examined the evidence properly yet. I think it's just a pointless waste of time, you know. I'm counting on you, Sebastian, Miles. Show him that the truth can be exposed in court, and take him down. Mr. Shields is backing us up. Now all we need is a breakthrough. Prosecutor the best, let's take a closer look at the evidence. Right. Let's have a look inside. It'd be great if we could find some kind of proof. Oh... Sebastian, you glorious bastard. This is the bell that was attached to Dorgan's chisel. 
if there are any traces left behind on it. Ugh, it's no good. There's not even a single smudge on it. What did you find, Prosecutor DeBest? Did you even find anything? <laughs> Darn it! Of course you'd find nothing. Something like that can't be called evidence, you know? All it is is trash. It may be sad, but that's the truth, you see. Were Sebastian's efforts all for naught? Indeed, the spell does not seem to be valid evidence. However... Mr. Hedgeworth, are you really giving up? Calm as always, Hedgeworth. Quite unlike Sebastian here. Well then, is the prosecution finished with its argument? Objection. Justine, not yet. We're not through yet. There's still something we haven't examined. You're still not giving up. Struggling in vain is not cute at all, you know. It seems Sebastian hasn't given up yet, either. I was just thinking the exact same thing. The last item remaining. Is it trash, or is it evidence? If we don't examine it, we'll never find out. The item I'm thinking of is... The newspaper. Still not done examining the newspaper that the bell was wrapped in. It seems that Sebastian has the same idea as I do. Now, this is just wonderful, you know? So wonderful. It's to cry for. Is it desperation or simply reckless abandon? Are you really going to pin all your hopes on a worthless scrap of newspaper? Huh. <laughs> we won't know for sure whether or not it's worthless until we examine it, will we? Sebastian, let's examine it post haste. Is this handprint? There's something greasy on here too. Is it oil? Judge Courtney, we'd like to request a fingerprint analysis on this paper. Could you please summon someone from forensics? Your request is accepted. Contact the lab at once. Reporting, these are definitely fingerprints. However, it's from a glove. What? And I tell you, it's nothing but a worthless scrap of paper. Just think about it, you know? When handling important evidence. What kind of idiot wouldn't use gloves? Oh wait, wouldn't that be you? The idiot who doesn't know when to give up. That's pretty harsh, talking to your son like that. What's wrong with calling an idiot an idiot? If you want to be the best, you have to be heartless. I have no compassion for worthless individuals, not even my own son. We're still on the fucking second chapter. Oops! <laughs> you know, you've always called yourself a genius prosecutor, haven't you? Didn't I explain it to you this morning, why you were a genius up until now? That's right. It was all because of me. Because of my authority. We're always being protected by people like Courtney and me. Uh -uh. Get that stinky face of yours out of my sight. Stinking. You know, now that I think about it, that stench might just suit you perfectly. Just keep it away from my nose, or my eyes will start watering. Objection. Wrong. You're wrong, Pops. Sebastian? Child abuse, you, you, you got a point, I guess. What are you talking about? You're the one who stinks, Pops. It's you, not me. What? You haven't noticed, have you? You smell, Pops. So much that you can't even hide it. Mr. Edgeworth, try smelling the handprint on the newspaper. The smell. Hmm, it smells like oil. I know something that smells just like it. Come to think of it, back then. It smells like motor oil. Maintaining that motorcycle must be Blaze's hobby. That's right. The smell proves it. It proves that the culprit who hid the evidence was... It's no good. 
I guess I can't become the best after all. I'm too soft. I could never be so heartless. I just can't bring down my father with my own hands. Prosecutor the best. Summon your courage. Become a different prosecutor from your father. Wasn't that what you decided? We are prosecutors. And as prosecutors, we stand in the courtroom. In that case, isn't it our duty to shed light on the truth? Exposing crimes and bringing criminals to justice. Even if the criminal is your own father. That is your duty as a prosecutor. Didn't I promise you that if you have the courage to stand up, I will show you the way. And if you cannot do it alone, then we shall do it together. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Allow me to present the evidence that connects this handprint with my father. Gloves, 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 gloves. This is the smell of motor oil. The kind used for maintaining motorcycles. Both myself and Mr. Edgeworth have both have smelled this exact same smell before. Place the best. It was in your garage. And wouldn't you say these fingerprints have a rather peculiar shape? Five letters that spell out D A D E A T H. It's exactly the same as your own gloves. <laughs> you can buy gloves like that from anywhere. It doesn't prove a thing. Is that really the case? It's not the only thing that these two pieces of evidence have in common. The fingerprints on the newspaper that was used to wrap up the bell. And Blaze's mechanics gloves. This is the unmistakable similarity they both share. Do you know it? Do you notice it? A. It's faded. Half faded, anyways. Yep, the A. If you examine the imprint left by the letter A, you'll see it's unmistakably from this glove. What? That's not all. There is one more item we must take note of, namely, these dirt stains. I suggest we do a comparative analysis of the dirt stains from the newspaper and the glove. If the contents match up, then it will prove to be the be decisive evidence. Bailiff, please have these dirt samples sent to forensics for analysis immediately. <laughs> Edgeworth, Sebastian, you lowly prosecutors, do you have any idea who I am? Pops, you can't run away anymore. It's been proven in court that you concealed the evidence and that you tried to cover for the defendant. You're saying that I'm guilty? I'll be sent- that I'll be sent to prison? Me? He's the best? A couple of snot-nosed punks are gonna make me disappear? There must be some mistake. Be a man, and admit your crimes. You really think you can survive if I'm not around? I- I'll be fine now. I thought I wanted to become the best prosecutor, so I could get your approval, Pops. But when I was kidnapped by your men, and stuck in that dark room, I started thinking. I am truly powerless. I despaired and averted my eyes from the truth. But... At that moment, Mr. Edgeworth stepped in and showed me the way. And now, I am no longer just a child chasing after his father's approval. I've become capable. I can find evidence, all on my own. Yes, you can! You fucking go! I'm so proud of you! <laughs> Edward is my new dad now. The men kidnapped you. Why were you? Pops, I'll show you the truth you never knew through this trial. Sebastian, how dare you speak to me like that? You should have just stayed as an idiot son. Damn, I didn't know we were three parents. <laughs> 
Also, hello. Welcome to my stream. You may have hated me to the very end, Pops. But I... I've always looked up to you. Thank you for everything up until now. And goodbye. You, since when did you... Oh, okay. We can all be his parents. <laughs> his new parents. It has been established that the evidence was concealed by Blaze the Best himself. A judgment regarding his concealment of evidence shall be delivered at a separate trial. The missing chisel and knife still have yet to be found. However, once the search of the waste disposal site is underway, they will surely be discovered. The knife will be found. What will happen to me if it's found? Heh, <laughs> no need to worry. You'll simply receive the punishment you deserve for your crime. Uh, punishment? For me? Blaze, what in the world are you doing? You, you... After all, you're boasting about being able to create your own truths and not guilty verdicts. That's why I contacted you immediately after the prison incident in the first place. And to make matters worse, you even kidnapped the wrong kid. I just can't believe this. You really, really, really are completely useless. That was certainly a violent outburst. But you heard her, Prosecutor, the best. Yeah, she got flustered and said a bunch of important stuff. Right? Indeed. That's correct. He still doesn't seem very sure of himself. Very well. And with that, this court is adjourned. What? Huh? Wh who are you? Judge Courtney, it's still too early for a happy ending. Long Ji says, in the end of the trial, it's not always the end of the case. And who might you be? My name's Shi Long Lang. I'm just a humble, lone investigator. Do you have some objection with this trial? Heh, <laughs> not a chance. The defendant here has a, has a heart as black as a moonless night. Long? Don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. You got it. Ain't this nice? Now you're finally going to prison where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming for a suspended sentence, don't you agree? Agent Long, what are you talking about? The SS5 incident from 12 years ago. Yet another fucking incident. It's a case I'll never forget. 12 years ago. Fuck, the next chapter is also fucking really long. A lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my father were close friends, and our clan protected the president's life. But then, he suddenly changed. It's as if he became an entirely different person. Nowadays, he doesn't even have a shred of faith in the police force of Sheng Fa. Twelve years ago. I wonder what went on then. Might it have something to do with Long's father and President Huang? Patricia Rowland. I knew a Blasey. Blaze the best. I thought it was a Blasey. Back then, the two of you killed off the Long clan. <laughs> Were you involved in the incident 12 years ago? That's right, I was. However, I'm not here to chase after ghosts of the past. I'm here for you, Justine Courtney. M me You, and one other. John! Miss Courtney, you're coming along too. As a, as a suspect in the murder of the president of Zheng Fa, Di Jun Huang. Agent Long, what evidence do you- Settle down, Mr. Prosecutor. The investigation has only just begun. We're going to inspect the crime scene with the suspects in attendance. Agent Long, he get his hands on some new evidence- pieces of, pieces of evidence. If you have any objections, you can tag along as well. 
I shall do just that. The end of the trial is not always the end of the case. There are still many mysteries yet unsolved surrounding the murder of the president. Namely, the true nature of the giant monster. And... Come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. That is, if you can bring me to justice. But I highly doubt that. The true identity of the person on the other end of the phone. Okay. This will easily be like one and a half hours. Uh, what about the next part then? Uh, I might be able to finish this actually. What about the end? I don't know. I'll try one more, at the very least. But I am really not going to sit here for 12 hours to finish this. That's not happening. So this might be the last part I play today. Uh, um, could you please give it a rest already? The heck? I'm telling y'all, it's best for y'all's sake to come clean. The staff has their lips sealed, shut as their reporters continue their tenacious negotiations. If you're not here to cooperate with the investigation, I must ask you to vacate the premises. Put a sock in it, copper. Y'all couldn't even stop Mozilla's invasion. Not only did, this, did they secretly raise a giant monster, but now the staff is trying to cover it up. Like I said, we haven't been raising any monsters here at the film lot. But ain't you said you done so... Lotta, please. <laughs> but ain't you said you done so gory yourself? Yourself? Sure, I saw it, but it's not like we were keeping it on the film lot. Mind if we butt in? I figured it was. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Edgeworth! And John. Oh, you'll come here to search for the monster, too. We're searching for a criminal, not a monster. Long Ji says. The darkness inside a criminal's heart can be likened to a monster. Well, when it comes to killing people, criminals are much different from monsters. Agent Long, this is a problem. I can't let outsiders enter the crime scene. These are all key figures in the case. I'd like them to be here when the investigation resumes. Agent Long, regarding what you said about resuming the investigation, where do you intend to start? We'll start by reviewing the case. Today, the body of President Huang was found here at the film line. The president's whereabouts from two nights ago are still unknown. It seems he snuck out from under the eyes of his bodyguards and ventured outside. That night was the last time he was seen alive. It was when he met with you, Judge Courtney, on the roof of the Grand Tower. So why did you meet with the President? That... I cannot say. You can't tell us, even under suspicion of murder. I can't say? Why not? Miss Courtney, if you don't say anything, you'll only be more suspicious. Huh, <laughs> she must have a reason to clear up. I think you're somehow involved in the president's assassination. Objection. The president's body was only discovered today. That still leaves a blank of one whole day after Judge Courtney met, him, met with him un unaccounted for. Don't be so impatient. We're gonna fill in that blank right here, right now. The evening of that blank day in question is what's important. What happened here last night? So why don't you tell us, John Marsh? Me? You know you were here last night. What? John was here? Between that little missy's testimony and the footprints we found, we can easily prove it. John, you were rehearsing here la la last night, right? You were spying on me? 
Huh, um, I'm sorry. I just came to check up on things. You really shouldn't be staying up so late, you know? Mind your own business. John Marsh, that young lady was worried about you. You will not speak to her like that. Sorry. How many times have I told you to be more mindful of the way you speak? Is it just me or just Miss Courtney's personality seem kind of different? She seems to be as strict with her own son as she is with those who violate the law. Are you listening to me? And earlier as well. <laughs> you should always bear that in mind, no matter the occasion. Can we get on with the investigation already? Ah, pardon me. Judge Courtney to get carried away like that. This must be her motherly side. Agent Long, do you suspect John? All I want is the truth. Why was the president killed? And I want to know who killed him. I'll do whatever it takes to find out. It seems the president was like family to him. John, would it be alright if we asked you a few questions? Sure, it's fine. I got nothing to hide anyway. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so... Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own, that's all. I do it all the time, and it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. You were rehearsing alone that late at night? John, when I called you last night, you told me you were at a hotel. You called him. About what time was that? I believe it was around 11 p.m. I require him to call me every night. That's our rule whenever he stays away from home. The truth is, I was at the film lot during that time. So you lied to me. <laughs> oh no, even the milk is sweaty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Miss Courtney sure is angry. I think it's admirable that he practiced on his own, even if he hid it from his mom. He's so grounded. I'm sure she was simply worried. Who knows what could have happened to him out alone at so late at night. And in reality, he did get caught up in yesterday's incident. But John said there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, right? Is that really the truth? Do it all the time, and then, uh... Muzel's head. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. That's a lie, isn't it? The monster's head fell from the roof of that building. Surely you must have known about that. I don't know anything about it. Is that true? I told you, I just practiced a bit and then I went back. Anything about Musilla's head falling or anything like that? Or do you have evidence to show that I know something? There certainly isn't any evidence of that. It's also possible that it fell after John had already come back. There's no evidence, and like I said, we're done talking. We're not done talking yet. Well, now. The falling monster's head wasn't the only unusual thing that happened last night. And this is something you should be well aware of. What happened last night, aside from Musella's head falling? We have evidence right here. Huh, could that be... That's right, it's the video he recorded of your performance. Mm -hmm. What? You're telling me you have video from last night? Exactly, and in this video, there is clearly something that is out of the ordinary. This is... Monster's footprint. Would you say that Monster's footprint are commonplace on a film set? John, why did you conceal this video from us? No reason, really. Hey, pup. This is no joking matter. You had a reason to hide it, right? John Marsh, answer him clearly. Mom... Well, I didn't want anyone to see me rehearsing.
In other words, you're embarrassed about others seeing you practice. Yeah, got a problem with that? You're saying that's why you hid the evidence. John! <laughs> but nagging me, you already busted me, what more do you want? Yeah, the footprints were there, but I just practiced and headed home. How come you're so cal so calm after finding these footprints? It's a monster, you know? A real live monster. I thought it was just a part of the set. Besides, there's lots of other weird stuff around here too. He's suspicious, Chief. This kid's really suspicious. You're right. The smell of a scoop stinks to a high heaven. Shut up. We're done talking. Get up. Agent Long. <laughs> it's just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. This video backs up my logic. Huh? Is there something in the video that's related to the case? Yeah. Take a good hard look at the monster's co at the monster costume in the top left. The Musilla costume? Try comparing it with the one over there right now. Hmm, it looks like it's just hanging there limply, though. And the zipper on its back is zipped up tightly. Zipper on its back. What? Well, the this discrepancy is... Yeah, the difference is plain to see. In the video, the zipper is clearly open. That's right. Someone was inside. What? Mr. Powers, is the costume super usually... It's always zipped up tightly when it's not in use. Mr. Prosecutor, do you remember? That logic from before. Two nights ago, Courtney pushed the president off the roof and killed him. Afterwards, she snuck into the film lot to hide the body. And here. Wouldn't it be easy to hide a body in the costume or behind all this equipment? And all she had to do last night was retrieve the body. You're saying the body is hidden inside the costume. Yeah, that's right. Judge Courtney, two nights ago, you pushed the president off the roof of the, of the tower. You then hid the body inside the monster costume. I... I did no such thing. Say what you want. You were the only one who could have done it. It should have already been proven impossible. The film lot was locked at the time. Judge Courtney could not have entered this place. I wonder if there was an accomplice. What? I'll tell you my reasoning, so listen up. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film line. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. The two of them then hid the president's body inside that monster costume over there. You think this crime had such an elaborate plan? To take the life of a nation's president. An elaborate plan is to be expected, don't you think? John would never take part in such a crime. Yes. <laughs> You're the one being suspected. Your words don't carry much weight. I wouldn't think those two had sufficient motive for something like this, though. Well, maybe they had a motive that we didn't know about. You were the last one to meet with the president. And you're still keeping the details secret. Don't you think it's only natural that you're being suspected? So I almost threw hands with the 13-year-old! <laughs> Judge Courtney, is there no way for you to tell us your secret? By the way, have you played this game before? My apologies. I just cannot. No matter what. However, when the time I can talk, when the time I can talk about it comes, I will surely let you know. So if you could please. You have, okay. So I <laughs> believe you. Is that what you wanted to say? That's what all criminals say. And you, pup. If you got an explanation, hurry up and spit it out. Hmm. I didn't do nothing. That's all I'm saying. Both mother mother and son won't talk. You're still gonna defend him like this? 
It's true, Judge Courtney's actions are a mystery. However, we still don't know whether or not that ties in with the motive for murder. Yeah, that's right. The motive for murder can wait. For now, let's talk about the situation surrounding the crime. And the fact that these two are the only ones who could have done it. Fourth statement. Inside. There we go. Impress. In the video, we cannot see the inside of the costume. So can you really say for certain that the body was placed inside? Yeah, I'll give you that much. In that case, why don't we try examining it? The inside of the costume. There might be some traces left inside. Mr. Powers, may we examine the inside of the costume? Sure, go ahead. But it might be kind of stinky since I sweat a lot in there. This is... Incredibly dirty. That's strange. You always make sure to clean it after using it, so that the sweat doesn't da doesn't damage the costume. Isn't this just proof that someone besides you used this costume? I'd say that dirt from the body probably got onto the costume. The president's body did fall on top of the monster's footprint. That must be where the dirt came from. Are you satisfied now? They're stirred inside the costume. It must have gotten there when the body was hidden inside. What are them? Objection! Oh yeah, there is not the yellow thing. Dirt got onto the costume when the body was hidden inside it. Is that really the case? You have a problem with that? There is a fair amount of dirt inside the front of the costume. Yeah, that is a lot of dirt. However, I'd like you to focus on the state the body is in. It's lying on top of the dirt, and yet there's no dirt on the front of the body. That too. If the body really was inside the costume, then it's strange that the front of the body isn't stained with more dirt. <laughs> well then, how would you explain it? How did the dirt get inside the costume? In the video footage, it's very likely that someone was inside the costume. But just who could it have been? Hmm, where have I seen this? What's the matter, Kay? I just feel like I remember seeing something that looked like this dirt somewhere before. But where was it? There were these bits of grey fragments mixed in with the dirt. Grey fragments. There does seem to be something other than normal dirt mixed into it. Something must have gotten stuck to it. Lots of it, I might add. Hmm. Something got stuck to it. This may merit a closer look. Where do we see dirt that looks like what's stuck on the inside of the costume? <sighs> I know this. It's the gloves. See this? This dirt has some great bits mixed into it. Huh? And what of it? We found an item belonging to a certain man that was covered in this same type of dirt. That is to say, these gloves. Those dirt stains? Certainly look the same, but tell me. Just what exactly is this grey substance? This grey substance is... Concrete. This grey substance must be fragments of concrete. You mean, the stuff that was scattered around the monster's footprints? Exactly. Meanwhile, who do these gloves which are stained with the same kind of dirt belong to? Oh, I remember! We found it at Blaze's place! Earlier today, we went to Blaze's garage. There, we discovered these dirt-stained gloves. Come to think of it. There were also hammers, shovels, and other tools placed inside as well. Why would mechanics' gloves intended to be used on a machines be covered in dirt? If he broke the concrete with a hammer and then dug into the soil with the shovel, then it's only natural for dirt like that to get on the sho on the gloves. Then, maybe... Yes, the true nature of the monster's footprints has been made clear. It's possible that these footprints were dug up by Blaze the Best himself. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible, you say? 
Please do enlighten me. Because I honestly have no clue. Why on earth would he do something like that? Why did he make the monster footprints? Thinking about it, the answer must be... He was digging something up. It's possible he was digging something up. It's, it probably went something like this. Last night at this spot, there was something that Blaze needed to dig up. For that reason, he broke the lock on the back door and sneaked into the film lot. Using the hammer and shovel, he set to work. He placed the items he dug up into his bag, but before he could fill in the holes. How oh, that's when John came to practice! Exactly. Blaze panicked and had no choice but to hide himself in the Moosilla costume nearby. Music is great. Mm. I think it would deduce so much from just a pair of dirt stained gloves. However, all this is merely a possibility. There's still no proof that he was the one who was hiding inside that costume. For all we know, he might have left the scene once he's finished digging. On the contrary, such proof does exist and can be seen in the video. When this video was recorded, Blaze was definitely inside the film lot. What? Well, I can't blame Agent Long for not noticing. The difference between the current film lot and the one in John's video, along with the state of Blaze's garage, it's all too clear that Blaze was still he still here. No proofs that Blaze was still at the film lot when this video was recorded. Bag. This bag placed near the costume. There was an ins identical one inside Blaze's garage. Where am I now, by the way? Uh, okay, I'm down here. Ugh. First, the dirt on the gloves, and now the bag. It seems there is a connection. And that's my proof. The place was inside the costume. Ergo, the president's body could not have been hidden inside it. <laughs> Seems I was able to refute Agent, Lung, Agent Lung's reasoning. So we need to go investigate Blaze's house right away, pal. We need to know what was inside that bag. Yes, sir. Y'all pop down and listen up. Y'all just been saying whatever works best for y'all. And the noisy one returns. That there's the footprints of the mighty Moozilla. They ain't just some random holes dug up by that old coot. Hmm. I believe the true nature of these footprints has already been proven quite logically. Logic schmogic. I ain't buying it. Say what you want, but I know what I saw. And I saw Moozilla. Is she referring to how she saw Moozilla out the window of the Grand Tower? Preposterous. Upon our journalist's souls. We ain't having none of it. That statement is an insult to journalists everywhere. Ah, oh, that's right. There's more to them foot monsters than just those footprints. I remember hearing that Sonny over there was seen with the monster earlier. I reckon that gal over there said she witnessed her it herself. When these two are, are together, all meaningful talk grinds to a halt. We only knew just what the monster really was. I think those two would quiet down. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything you can do? The monster's true identity. We don't have much choice. Let's see what we can do. Is there something y'all ain't telling us about the monster? Nicole, ask him. Ask him right now. Please settle down. Regarding the true identity of that monster, I already know what it is. What do you say? That's right. The video John recorded pro provided the hint that I needed. What you talking about? Miss Nichols saw Gordy. And she went to check up on John's practice. At that time, she mistook something for Gordy. The monster can be seen in this photograph. What? Ain't that just some plain old souvenir photo? 
You all don't really think you can pull the wool over my ass of, on a, of a pro like me, do you? What did Miss Nichols really see that she mistook for Gordy? Naturally, Gordy's true identity was this camera crane. What? The video John recorded was shot from a, from fairly high up. A shot from this position would be impossible without a camera crane. But there ain't no way Miss Stickles would mistake a camera crane for Gordy. I wonder about that, Miss Nichols. Y yes. Earlier, you said the prescription for your glasses didn't match your eyesight anymore, correct? Yes, lately, it seems like my eyesight has suddenly gotten a lot worse. So would you say that you weren't able to see Gordy very clearly in the dark? That, that's right. Its silhouette was all I could make out. But I remember what Nick But remember what Miss Nichols said. And I quote, its skin was really scaly, almost like a reptile. Camera cranes ain't got no flesh on them, let alone skin. It's just a bare steel frame. That is certainly true. At least in the case of this photo. However, last night, it did have skin. Y'all just doing whatever you can do, you can to, to get in the way of our big scoop, ain't you? That was not my intention. But since I've come this far, it's time to put an end to your nonsense. Gordy's skin is right before our very eyes. This is the skin of Gordy. Miss Nichols saw. The tarp, or whatever. As Miss Nichols stated in her testimony earlier, it looked like it was going to rain last night. Well, it never actually rained. John still covered the camera crane with a rainproof sheet, which to Miss Nichols looked like a monster's skin. What? You gotta be kidding me! Isn't that right, John? Man, you saw through it all. Not that, old man. Unfortunately, the Gordy that Miss Nichols saw was nothing more than more than an illusion. Not again. Looks like my dream has shriveled up and died once again. Mentor. Seems like things have finally settled down. I really thought the boy was hiding something from me. Guess I had it all wrong. Now that we figured out the true form of the monster, everyone seems refreshed. Actually, there's two people here who are totally bummed out. Agent Lung! The report is in, sir. You've got the results of President Huang's autopsy. Good, show it to me. Contusions and bone fractures found across the body, resulting from tremendous pressure. Well, this was the cause of death. In other words, he was crushed to death. I thought as much. The yellow stain on his chest is currently under investigation. But it seems that gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. Sunflower residue? I didn't know the president was into gardening. No, gunpowder residue. The traces, traces of it are left behind when a gun is fired. Since it has been found on his right hand, it's possible that the president fired a gun. A gun, huh? Well, we didn't find any guns when we investigated this area. Did Blaze pee on the president? <laughs> it's not pee. Unexplained gunpowder residue. I'll have to look over the autopsy report later. Now then, Agent Long, it seems we have our answer. The President did not die from falling off the roof of the Grand Tower. It would? <laughs> oh my god. Rather, he died from being crushed under Musilla's head. I can't deny it. Looks like your logic was right after all. This means the suspicions surrounding Miss Courtney should be cleared up, right? Yes, not only the cause of death. But the time of death proves her innocence as well. Judge Courtney met with the pre president two nights ago. However, according to the autopsy report, the time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. Lucilla's head 
also fell last night. It matches up perfectly. It's a relief! Isn't it a bit too early to be relieved? Agent Long. The president died after being crushed by the Muzilla's head. That I will admit. But the problem is, who was responsible for the falling head? Musilla's head fell last night, and last night, the one who wasn't the film lot was. What are you saying? Surely you're not implying... That's right. You killed him, didn't you? John Marsh. Lung, I love you, but... Sometimes I question your logic. <laughs> My pup is hiding something. He was at the scene where, where the body was discovered last night. He also saw the footprints. And despite that, he still claims to know absolutely nothing about the incident. Isn't that a bit too convenient? These footprint-shaped holes have not been proven to be related to the case. Just because he saw the holes doesn't necessarily mean that he's involved in the incident. You sure about that? Take a look at the pup's face. He looks pretty shaken up to me. It looks like he hit the mark. But John doesn't want to talk about it. If he doesn't feel like talking, then I have an idea of my own. Let's check the tape. Agent Long, what is your intention? Police have a device that lets you analyze the video footage up close and personal. Agent Long, you would suspect John enough to go that far? As long as John's lips are sealed. This may be the only way for us to get closer to the truth. Detective Gumshoe, if I'm not mistaken, you have that device with you, correct? Mr. Analysis is ready to go, sir. Now we're talking. Prosecutor Edgeworth... Would you please perform the video analysis for us? She wants me to do it. Who knows what kind of false that wolf man will find in it? This isn't exactly my strong suit, but I suppose I have no choice. Any new clues? Hold on, wait, I wanna... There isn't anything over there. Nothing over there. Over here. Oh, look at here. <laughs> this is... What's the matter? I want to see too. Huh? Hey, what's wrong? Show it to me. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I request you submit the evidence to the court. Please take a look at the top right corner of the zoomed-in video. This... This person is... The president! Possible! Huh? N no way! Seems we finally found it at last. The evidence that points to the true killer. This video places John at a major disadvantage. God, I can't read. You're wrong! That's not right! I didn't know anything about this! It's not gonna cut it. It's clear that you and the victim were together at the same place where the body was later found. John Marsh, there's no doubt. You killed the president. No! This can't be! Why? Why would you? John, please don't tell me. Did you really kill the president? Mr. Edgeworth, is this really decisive evidence? Mr. Prosecutor, looks like even you can't object to this. Mm-hmm. That pup said he didn't know anything, right? And yet... The president's right here in this video. John, what are you hiding? John, please tell us the truth. The truth is... The truth is, it's all my fault. John Marsh, what did you do? Mozilla's head falling was all my fault. While I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. Then my mom called me, so I left the film lot. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over, Musilla's head that was on the roof had fallen. And right next to it was the 
president, lying dead on the ground. How can that be? I see. There were indeed traces that something had caught, uh, caught fire on the rooftop. It was just a small fire, so I was able to put it up by myself. So, the president's death was John's fault? But, wouldn't that make this next turn, sir? And then, what did you do with the fallen head? I took it apart, brought the pieces up to the roof, and put it back together. So you put the put out the fire, and even put the fallen head back on the roof. Which means you were hiding evidence. We can't be having that, you naughty little pup. I didn't do it on purpose. I really did just forget to turn off the heater. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. Oh, sorry. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted if Musilla's head was on top of the stand. It would have fallen off. So the head fell down because of the fire. Yes, and if that's the case, I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. There's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. So is it really just an accident? If that's the truth, then what was the president doing there? I don't know. There was no one else around when I was there. You expect me to believe that? The president wouldn't have just come to a place like this without the reason, you know? Indeed. The president's reason for coming here is still a huge mystery. Two nights ago, he met with Judge Courtney on the roof of the Grand Tower. And last night, he was here at the film lot. Did he meet with John? I'll have to listen to John's testimony very carefully. Okay. Ah! What was the statue of- what was the state of the statue? What was the state of the body? I didn't get a good look, because it was dark. Hmm? He's suddenly become as quiet as a mouse. I guess John doesn't really want to remember anything about the body. Is that the only reason why he's come so quiet? Should I press him for more details? You didn't get a good look, then how did you know he was dead? That's... well... He's clearly shaken. He must be hiding something. Wouldn't you normally call for help if you see someone collapse on the ground? However, you did nothing of the sort. But... but he... he was already dead. Is that so? I seem quite certain that the president was already dead. Now, is there a reason for that, I wonder? The guy was collapsed on the ground and right next to him was the fallen monster's head. I'm not stupid. It wasn't hard to imagine what happened. You can imagine whatever you want, but there's there was no way for you to know that he was dead. You actually checked to make sure the president was dead, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I was scared, but I got up close to the body and checked to see if he was breathing. I thought as much. However, why would he hide that? There must be a reason. Please tell me the state of the body at the time. At first, I didn't know he was dead. I would have realized sooner if there had been any blood. But there wasn't a single drop, and his clothes were completely spotless. Either way, he wasn't breathing. That's how I knew he was already dead. Would you please append those statements to your testimony? I didn't know right away that he was dead. There was no blood in his clothes or spotless. But he wasn't breathing at all when I checked, so I knew he was already dead. Okay, that's all this. I'm the one, two. Okay, I thought there were three. Three, three. I didn't know. That's the one. Uh, and then some crime scene notes. Spotless, you say? So you peed on him. <laughs> His clothes were spotless. Y yeah, that's right. You got a problem with it, old man? John, it is painfully obvious that you are desperately trying to hide something from me. What are you going on about? I'm not hiding anything. You are hiding. Something about this yellow stain on the president's clothes, correct? Why did you leave it entirely out of your testimony? The fact that you made no mention of it... 
We should make no mention of it. <laughs> he was so frightened. I was like, I was so frightened. He he peed the president's pants. In fact, he made no mention of it. Only serves to cast more suspicion upon yourself. Th th that's because. I hope you have a convincing explanation. Judge Courtney. Allow me to explain. Why are you? The yellow stain left on the president's chest is almost certainly lion lily pollen. Lion lily? When I met with the president on the roof of the Grand Tower two nights ago, I brought him a bouquet of lion lilies. Lion lilies are beautiful flowers with stunning golden petals. Some of the pollen from the lilies must have gotten on the president's suit. Huh? But... I didn't see any lilies in the security footage, though. They were simply obscured by the president's body. Why did you bring a bouquet? Th th that... I... I cannot say. Hey, hey! You're keeping way too many secrets. You won't tell us why you met with the president, or the reason you bought, brought him flowers. My apologies. However, I did give him the bouquet. That much is true. But when the president's body was discovered, we didn't find any flowers. I... I honestly don't know how that could be. <laughs> hey, Miss Judge. All your answers have been too vague. You can't say this and you don't know that. Do you accept flimsy testimony like that in your trials? Hey, cut it out! John! Throw the flowers away! You threw them away. So there were flowers near the body when you found it. Yeah, that's right. They were right on top of the president's body. They had been crushed as flat as pancakes, though. I see! So the flowers were squashed by Musilla's head, too! And a large amount of pollen got stuck to the president's suit. That seems to be the gist of it. However, why did you go out of your way to dispose of the flowers? No reason. So John's not going to tell us anything, either. I guess mother and son both have a lot of secrets, huh? That is not true. At the very least, I can tell you why John threw away those flowers. Huh? John, you saw me leaving the house with those flowers in hand, did you not? Huh? I get it! John saw the flowers and thought of his mom. He threw them away in order to protect Judge Courtney from being suspected. That's not true! You're all wrong! That was his worst lie yet. We often decorate our house with those flowers. The bouquet must have reminded him of me. So the pup just happens to find the flowers from his mother's bouquet on top of the body. That's why he threw them away and kept silent about the body. Ha! <laughs> it's a tidy little story, if I've ever heard one. And what's wrong with that? I suppose you prefer untidy, messy stories, Agent Long. Don't tell me you've forgotten already, Missy. This pup confessed that he caused the monster's head to fall last night. Oh, that's true, but... He's currently the only suspect in the president's murder. Hmm. It is true that there are many reasons to suspect John. However, there is someone other than John who is far more suspicious. What do you say? John himself was kidnapped by that very person not too long ago. We rescued him from the refrigerated, refrigerated war, 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 warehouse near the harbor, pal. <clears throat> God. <laughs> I can't read. A refrigerated, a refrigerated warehouse. That's right, pal. Warehouse? <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> no, I said warehouse. That's what I said, not war. I said war. <laughs> The refrigeration wasn't turned on, so he wasn't about to freeze to death. But if he hadn't yelled out for help, we would have never found him. Once the sleeping drugs were off, he was finally able to call out for help. 
Sleeping drugs, huh? If I recall correctly, when you were kidnapped... That's right! There was a bottle lying on the floor in the, of the refrigerated warehouse. I think it was the same thing that was used on me not too long ago. That sleepy ZCC stuff. It's super powerful. How about it, Agent Long? John is clearly a victim. There is a mastermind at work behind the scenes of this, of this case. I don't know anything about this so-called mastermind. You, s you say they were here last night. I still don't know for sure yet. Huh. <laughs> it's not like you to be so vague, Mr. Prosecutor. Indeed, I still don't have any evidence that ties the mastermind to this murder. Is there someone else? Is there anyone else, anyone besides John who had the opportunity to murder the president? Sit. As I thought, in the end, that pup is our only suspect. Isn't there one more suspect, Agent Long? What's this? Didn't we prove it earlier? Last night, there was one more person here. He's the best. I'm saying he's the one who did it. Last night, John was not alone. Blaze the best was here too. Shouldn't we consider him to be a new suspect? He's the best. Kill the president. It's entirely possible. Blaze the best. He can't be. The same guy from 12 years ago. Hmm? 12 years ago. That keeps popping up. Well, a lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my old man were close friends, and our clan protected the president's life. Long, don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. You got it. Ain't this nice? Now you're finally going to prison, where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming for a suspended sentence, don't you agree? Agent Long, what happened 12 years ago? Nothing that concerns you. On the contrary, it might just have some sort of connection with this case. Hmm, and I suppose you have some proof, Mr. Prosecutor. Show me evidence that there is a connection between this case and the one 12 years ago. Evidence, you say? If you don't have any evidence, then there is no point in talking about it. Is there any evidence that connects this case with, that, with what happened 12 years ago? Ooh, letter from the from unknown. Please get revenge for twelve years ago. Take that. This letter was sent to Jill Crane, who was murdered two days ago. Although the sender is currently unknown. Here, it's written as follows. Please get revenge for twelve years ago. What? Twelve years ago? That's not all. Take a look at this as well. This is a report written by Patricia Rowland to Blaze the Best regarding Knightley. Please read this part here. That thing he laid to rest near the flower bed 12 years ago. Agent Long. Something big is happening here. Jill Crane's murder two days ago. And now, the president's murder today. There has to be some connection there. And the key to solving it lies in what happened 12 years ago, does it not? Asking me to reopen the old wounds of the Lung Clan. Agent Lung, I beg of you. Who was that just now? Shifu! You guys, what are you all doing here? We followed you here, Shifu. We heard that Shifu was investigating the incident from 12 years ago. You idiots! I'm not your boss anymore. Get back to your own posts. Sir, you can't do that. What do you say? Are you disobeying my order? Shifu, we also beg of you. Reinvestigate the SS5 incident from 12 years ago. None of us could ever forget the case. We know you feel the same way, Shifu. Agent Long, even your firm former subordinates desire to, to reinvestigate the case. And you think you can solve the mysteries of that case? Perhaps I can, with your help. Tch. 
Got it. I accept your invitation. Shifu! 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 Now then, with that decided, I guess it's my turn to shine. Okay. We're investigating a case from the past, right? And guess what the best tool for that is? The little Mr. Thief. Right. If we have the case case files from the past case, I can recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have the case files. Huh? What do you mean? Access to those case files is restricted. It's being treated as highly classified information. Oh my god, there's still so much. No, I, I'm, I'm ending it after this. I was like, man, we're probably at near the end. No, we're fucking not. Why is that? I don't know, but it seems like there were a lot of things that they wanted to keep hidden. Even what I know. It's limited to what was pu published in the newspapers back then. That will not be a problem. In any case, please tell us what you know. Sure. The SS5 incident. This case is long as I know the other ones combined. Oh my god, don't even fucking remind me of the second one. I was fucking... Oh, Vietnam flashback. The SS5 incident. The incident occurred on a winter day, 12 years ago. It was the 10th of February. The police department in this country received a call from a group of kidnappers. We've kidnapped President Huang, they said. Kidnapped. The SS5 incident was the case of President Huang's kidnap. Uh, I played the final case of that one in one sitting, I believe. I can I can check, hold on. Let me just check like real quick. Yeah, and that was only like 11 hours long, so... No, you, 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 <laughs> I check. I take those things very <laughs> seriously. It did take long. I don't know, am I gonna finish this today? I am tempted to, because then I will have finished like both investigations game in a week. Like total. Huh, anyways, in a minute, ransom of 100 million dollars. 100 million? Wait, just how much is that? It's such a large amount, she's having trouble visualizing it. At night, my old man was the last person to meet with the president. Mm-hmm. I only have like two chapters after this anyway, so... I slept for 12 hours! Sleep is like the last thing I need right now! We were they were together at the Zhengfa embassy until midnight on February 10th. After that, no one knows what the president was doing up until he was kidnapped. With the president's life at stake, the Shengfa government frantically gathered the money. After that, the ransom was delivered and the president was returned safe and sound. So, President Huang has been the president since 12 years ago. That's really amazing. Well, being in office for so long is just a small part of how amazing the man is. Huang seems a bit happy when he said that. And what happened to the kidnappers? Well, a top secret covert investigation was carried out. Then a secret trial was held. A trial? Does that mean the suspect was caught? The suspect was... Patricia Rowland. And the reason you came to the prison a few days ago. Yeah, I was put on extended leave from Interpol. So I decided to go back and reinvestigate what happened 12 years ago. First, I had to get a look at the face of my target. So the trial 12 years ago ended with a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Back then, my old man was in charge of every aspect of the president's security. He took responsibility for the kidnapping and was relieved of his post as, as bodyguard. But he continued to investigate as a regular police officer until... 
finally found the culprit. And it was none other than Patricia Rowling. There was no way she could be innocent. However, the result was a not guilty verdict. In the end, the case went unsolved. Crushed in both body and soul, my old man resigned from the police. What was the basis for arresting Patricia Rowland? There was a lot of evidence, at least, that's what I think. But I can see those documents for myself. So that's where my story ends. What should we do? We don't, we don't need this much information. Even the little thief would have a hard time producing a recreation. <laughs> Is there really nothing we can do? Looks like you could use some help with this. Who's that? Well, hell yeah. Francisco. And Mr. Shields, too. I finished up the trial and finally managed to catch up with you guys. Here, take this. This is... Ah, oh, it's the case files for the... This is five incident, sir. Sweet. When Roland mentioned 12 years ago during the trial, it caught my interest. I looked into it immediately and got in touch with Interpol. I expected no less from you, Francisco. Don't get the wrong idea, Miles Edgeworth. I didn't prepare these documents for you, the former prosecutor. I did it for the sake of the investigator taking up the case his father left behind. Sis, but I thought information on the SS5 incident was restricted to the public. That restriction was placed by the prosecutor in charge of the case, Blaze the Best. Blaze the Best was the prosecutor in charge. Him. However, as a result of the trial just now, Blaze's authority has been revoked. It's all thanks to his son. Sebastian, bringing down his father, the door to this past case has been opened. Prosecutor De Best is currently wrapping things up in Patricia Rowland's trial. He told me to relay this message to you. Leave Pops and his cohorts to me. You guys just take care of the case on your end. Heh, <laughs> it's become quite reliable right before our very eyes. Truly. Alrighty then. This is perfect. Now that we have the files, just leave the re-recreation re re to me. Indeed. Well then, let us begin. According to these documents, it appears that the incident took place right in front of the Tower Plaza. And let's head to the plaza right away! Okay, would you please activate the little Mr. Thief? Right. With these case files, recreating everything should be a snap. Where should I start? Where indeed, according to these documents, it seems there was a witness to the kidnapping of the, pre of the president. A freelance journalist by the name of Jack Cameron. However, he happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and was murdered by the culprit. So that would mean the place he saw the president that was here. Here? The Grand Tower? No, the Grand Tower was only built around a year ago, okay? Before that, this place cont contained mostly old abandoned buildings. However, 12 years ago, this place was. Huh. Now you're finally talking about some stuff that I know. Yeah, 12 years ago, at this very spot was. The Happy Family Home. What's up, pal? It was a place where children who had lost their parents could live. Or to put it simply, it was an orphanage. So the president was kidnapped at that orphanage. And the head of that facility at the time was Patricia Rowland. Apparently Rowland always referred to it as her home. It seems that suspicion would naturally fall upon her. This is filling it right over this again. Sorry, it's it's torn down by now. But yeah, they can they, technically they can recreate it. <laughs> 
Patricia Rowland, who plays the best, and President Huang. The darkness that remains from the SS5 incident still casts a shadow on the president present case. Okay, I'd like you to input the investigation data from Jack Cameron's murder case. We can probably assume that he was killed by one of the kidnappers. So if we solve the murder case, we'll know who the kidnappers were, right? Precisely. I'm counting on you. What the heck is this? Everything's green! I've come to expect such reactions. This is a recreation of the grounds of the facility that stood here 12 years ago. Based on the documents from the police investigation. I recreated the scene to show what it looked like when the police arrived at 7am the next day. It appears a fair amount of snow had piled up here. Yeah, I heard that the footprints in the snow were prime pieces of evidence. The snow fell during the day, on the day of the incident. So the snow only fell before the crime took place. Which means the footprints wouldn't have been erased by any further snow. I must make sure to pay close attention to these footprints. Uh, body, okay. This is the eyewitness of the president's kidnapping, Jack Cameron. What exactly did he witness? I recreated the state of his body based on the photos taken by the police. It appears he was struck up in the head from behind. The murder weapon was a brick, right? It looks like the ones from this garden. The blood that flowed from his head has splattered all over the surroundings. Here, take this! It's Mr. Cameron's autopsy report. Jack Cameron was a freelance journalist. He was killed because he witnessed the president's kidnapping. The blood really stands out in the recreation. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Even in the original photo, it looks brutal enough. A lot of blood was spilled. The back of his head is covered in blood. That must be where all the blood spilled from. According to the autopsy report, he was struck in the back of the head with a brick. Indeed, it's likely that the killer approached Mr. Cameron from behind. Hmm, is the victim holding something in his right hand? That's also written in the case files. Um, it seems he was holding onto a button. A button. Did he tear it off the culprit's clothes? Hmm, the victim was carrying a camera. Oh, according to the case files, it seems he only managed to take a single photo. Um, here it is. This is. Isn't that the president? He's being held at gunpoint. This must be the scene the victim witnessed. So the person in the coat must be the kidnapper. Indeed. Seems like some sort of disguise. The logic of Agent Lung's fa fa father is correct. Father? <laughs> this person should be Patricia Rowland. But why is there only one photo? Perhaps he was killed before he could take any more. Hmm. And the brick? This is the brick that was used as the murder weapon. You can find bricks like this all over the garden. They must have used one of them as a weapon. I assume this is the victim's cell phone. That's right! Um, apparently Mr. Cameron gave his eyewitness testimony over the cell phone. What do you mean by over the cell phone? After Cameron found the president, it seemed that he called his girlfriend. She didn't answer the phone, so Cameron left a message on her answering machine. The tape is in the case file too. You want to hear it? 
please. Hello, Jill. Are you asleep already? I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. President Huang is here of all places. And what's more? Crap, the light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. I can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. What was that sound at the end? Seems he was attacked while he was still on the, on the phone. He didn't long. May I ask? What was the name of Mr. Cameron's beloved? I'm pretty sure I heard her name was Jill Crane. So it was true. Did you say Jill? This was why she was seeking revenge for 12 long years. Feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. But Miss Crane tried to get revenge on Blaze, right? She may have wanted to get revenge on him for covering up the kidnapping case. Or perhaps she thought Blaze himself was the kidnapper. Mm. And then I gotta go here and there we go. Flower bed. According to the data, this facility had three gardens. And each of these gardens contains three flower beds. Hmm, the way these flower beds are lined up. Have I seen this arrangement somewhere before? Since it was during the winter, there were no flowers in bloom. What a shame. Hmm. What's this yellow flower? Huh? Why is there a single flower here? That is a lion lily. It's a very rare type of lily. You say lion lily. That's the flower Miss Courtney gave to her to the president. What's it doing here? Could it be? Just a coincidence. If I recall, the lion lily originates from Asia. In the language of flowers, it means the bond between parent and child. I never knew you were so familiar with flowers. Not much is common sense. You're simply lacking in your study, smiles Edgeworth, but he is the flower boy. <laughs> uh, flower beds. Connect. Three footprints and the flower beds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps this is the true nature of the monster's footprints. True nature? Compare the positions of the tree, three footprints and the three flower beds on the left. Huh? The exposed areas of dirt match the areas where the flower beds were. So Blaze dug holes in front of where each of the three flower beds used to be. Exactly. Now why would he do such a thing? I believe we have a piece of evidence that tells us why. Why did Blaze dig holes in the ground near the flower beds? Where is the... Report on Nightmare, this one. The report from Patricia Rowland to Blaze the Best. It said that something was laid to rest in front of the flower bed. So Blaze was following Miss Rowland's instructions to dig it up. But why would he dig up three holes? The report didn't state which of the three flower beds the item was in front of. How? Oh, so Blaze didn't know exactly where to dig. That's why he had to dig up all three spots. Most likely, yes. I'm sure Blaze himself was none too happy about that. He went through all that trouble. I wonder what he was trying to dig up. This pillar appears to be burnt. According to the files, it seems there was a fire on the evening of the incident. A fire. Um, let's see here. Huh? It says that one of the children at the orphanage spills 
spilled kerosene and set it on fire as a prank. I guess that kid had far too much energy. And thanks to that, we can't make out any of the footprints near the main hall. And then the footprints, okay, cool. The footprints here seem to lead to and from the body. You're facing the wrong way, Edgeworth! Ah, yes, the footprints. <laughs> oh my god. These footprints were believed to be the culprits. The shoe size is about a size 7. That's fairly average. It seems we won't be able to tell who the culprit is from these footprints. These footprints stop near the body. It must be Mr. Cameron's footprints. He sure has some big feet. They look like a size 11. According to the data, his shoes match these footprints. Mm. Talk too long. Three flower beds. No. Agent Long, what's the matter? Something strange. I wasn't able to read SS the SS5 incident case, case files until now. Since Blaze had all the access to that information restricted. Yeah, that's right. And yet, I feel like I've seen this exact scene somewhere before. What do you mean? Where did I see this? I could just remember. He looks deep in thought. I should leave him alone for a while. God, there's still more! <laughs> We've learned pretty much all that we can about the situation at the time of the murder. Hold on, wait, where do I pick up? Uh... Here. Okay. Huh. <sighs> <laughs> yes, I expect this footprint behind me. Oh, in that case, is there another scene you'd like me to, you'd like to recreate? Yes. Would you do the honors? Honors. Would you like? I would like you to recreate the scene when the victim witnessed the president's ki kidnapping. Right. I'll create the scene based on Mr. Cameron's photo. Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. And the president and his kidnapper are standing on the road. My old man based his initial investigation on this man's eyewitness testimony. As a result, it led him to believe that the kidnapping and, and this facility were related. And that's how he came to suspect the head of the orphanage, Patricia Rowland. Yeah. In court, Blaze the Best treated this testimony as if it meant nothing. Why would he do that? The president, and his, the president and his kidnapper were not standing inside the orphanage grounds, so a connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping was difficult to prove. I see. It's not like they were seen inside the orphanage, after all. Tch. No matter how much evidence the detective gather, detectives gather at the, cr at the crime scene. <laughs> It doesn't mean squat if the prosecutor won't use it in court. At least the best had some kind of connection with Patricia Rowland. I figure they had some kind of deal going on. In other words, do you think that Blaze was one of the kidnappers? However, your father was convinced that Patricia Rowland was the culprit. Your father was a highly capable investigator, I presume. Might, might he have had some other basis for his conclusion besides the eyewitness testimony? Yeah, I figure he did. I have no idea what it was. The old man never really talked much about this case. Agent Long's father, Dai Long Long. President Huang's most trusted confidant. 
truth he discovered was suppressed by Blaze the Best. First, we must find that hidden truth. Logic, I believe. Uh, yeah, what did Blaze dig up and was Blaze a kidnapper? A skin suit? We suppose that Blaze was one of the kidnappers. It becomes more likely that what he dug up yesterday is connected to the abduction. What is it? I figured it out! It was treasure! Treasure! Couldn't Blaze have dug up the ransom money? The 100 million dollar ransom. Buried in the ground until the heat had died down. It's certainly possible. I know, right? Listen, if he if he has like a, a, a like a specially made uh, jacket that like defines his muscles, then let him have that, you know. Like, okay, now where do I go? Snowman. Mm, about this snowman, when we recreated the scene where Mr. Cameron was killed, it had already melted. The scarf was all soggy, and one of its button eyes was missing. Indeed, at this stage, it appears that most of its original form was still intact. Although, there's one spot that looks unnaturally lacking. Poor thing. I bet some naughty kid must have plucked it off. Although, from a thief's perspective, what kid does have s that kid does have some promise. Was it plucked off by one of the children at the orphanage? No. Perhaps it was taken by an entirely different person altogether. The button, 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 the button. <laughs> the snowman. Wouldn't you say it's missing something? Ha, ah, it's right eye is missing. Precisely. And what's more, that missing eye happens to be in our possession button that Mr. Cameron was holding on to. It's got the exact same design as the snowman's left eye. We assume this button was indeed the snowman's eye. A huge contradiction arises. If this button is a snowman's eye, the contradiction arises. The location of the victim? Yeah. The victim was holding on to the button. Furthermore, the button was stained with blood. In other words, he grabbed the button after he was attacked. For example, if we were to picture it in this way. After being struck in the back of the head, Mr. Cameron lost his balance. As he was falling, he reached out his hand towards the nearby snowman. However, it could not support his weight and he collapsed while still grasping the button. Huh? Th that means... Mr. Cameron was near the snowman when he was attacked? Indeed. At the very least, he must have been without, within arm's reach, however. It's quite clear that he would not have been able to reach it from his current position. But Mr. Cameron's footprints only lead towards the flower bed. Can we be certain that those footprints really are Mr. Cameron's? It seems we'll need to investigate them one more time. Understood. I'll recreate the time the body was discovered. Seen one more time. These footprints shouldn't match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes, right? Let's inspect them again. These shoes should match the footprints. However, hmm, these shoes, it seems like they were not the ones originally worn by the victim. What do you mean? If you look closely, you'll see the laces were tied up strangely. And the size doesn't seem to fit quite right either. That will mean these huge footprints leading up to the victim's feet were most likely made by someone other than the victim. So then, 
footprints leading to and from the victim's head. Must be Mr. Cameron's? No, not necessarily. They seem a little too small to be the victim's footprints. So none of the footprints are his. Then which way did Mr. Cameron walk from? It's quite simple. The victim did not walk here on his own accord, but rather, he was carried here after he was murdered by the culprit. The question now becomes, where was he killed and carried from? Perhaps it was near the snowman after all. Mr. Cameron's body was moved. If we consider the button he was holding onto. It's highly likely that he was killed near the snowman. I should take a closer look. Huh? There's a brick missing here. Hmm. Mm hmm. The rest are all in order. It's strange that only this one is missing. Murder of a brick and missing brick. Perhaps the missing brick was the one used as a murder weapon. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it seems to be just the right size to fit in that gap perfectly. Body was moved, breaking our snowman. As I thought, it seems the murder actually occurred near the snowman. If the button Mr. Cameron was holding on, holding, and the murder weapon came from here. Indeed. Also, if we assume that the killer picked up the brick near the snowman, And then tried to sneak up behind Mr. Cameron. Oh! Mr. Cameron totally would have seen the person picking up the brick! Exactly. Okay, please update the recreation. Mr. Cameron was not in the middle of the flower beds, but near the snowman. Okay, I'm on it! No matter how you look at it, this is strange. All the people involved in the case are ga gathered in the same place. Did we make a mistake here or something? One piece of evidence this recreation is... ...based on is odd. We're still not done, we still have a lot, with, mm, not a lot, but we still have some left, I guess. If I had to choose which piece of evidence is fake... ...which piece of evidence is likely to be fake? Picture. Was this photo really taken by Mr. Cameron? Eh? What do you mean? We have proven that whoever killed Mr. Cameron also moved the body. For what reason would they have to deliberately move his body? Perhaps the culprit wanted to falsify the scene that Mr. Cameron witnessed. And that's why they took a fake photo? They made the president stand under the street light and took a photo with Cameron's camera. It would have been quite simple. Now that you mention it, Mr. Cameron's camera only had one photo on it, right? Indeed. In all likelihood, the original roll of film had been removed from the camera. And after loading a new roll of film into the camera, the fake photo was taken. I see. So this photo must have been taken after Mr. Cameron was killed, right? Exactly. This was not the scene Mr. Cameron actually witnessed. It's likely that this photo is forged evidence. Then, where did Mr. Cameron witness the president and his kidnapper? The photo isn't the only piece of evidence that indicates what Mr. Cameron witnessed. Ah, oh, the testimony he left on the answering machine! Precisely. You should listen to the recording one more time and confirm what was said. Where else could the president and his kidnapper have been? So he said that the the lights went out, right? Take 
Mr. Cameron said this on the answering machine. The light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. There are only two places here where the lights are broken. The light by the or or the light by the orphanage. Okay. Could you please update the recreation? Roger. This is the kidnapper was near the orphanage. Indeed, with this, we have shown the connection between the orphanage and the kidnapper. That's why they moved the body and took a fake photo to create false testimony. In order to remove any suspicion towards the orphanage in court. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Like, b believe me. It's about to get even fucking weirder. Hmm, with this, the state of the recreation has changed completely. The time the body was discovered scene was probably has probably been greatly impacted as a result. Then let's go check it out right away. Preparations are ready. Since the state of the recreation has changed once again, I should press the Y button and select change recreation. Let's give it a try. Hold on, wait, uh... Yeah, what's up? Okay, change. You wanna change? Yes, whatever. I've recreated the time. Th I've recreated the scene. The blood splatter above the snow. There certainly was a substantial amount. It's almost as if the murder was actually committed here. Mr. Cameron shouldn't have should have been attacked near the snowman. Exactly. In that case, this blood must belong to someone else. What? But the police report said this was Mr. Cameron's blood. The one in charge of this case was placed the best. It would have been simple for him to falsify that information. But wouldn't it be faster to just clean up the blood stains rather than falsify the information? He wouldn't be able to do that. Think about it. Blaze knew that Mr. Cameron's body would be, dis be discovered here. In which case, the forensic department would naturally become involved. Huh? A luminal reaction! They would have discovered it with the power of science! Precisely. It would have been difficult to completely erase all traces of the blood. However, falsifying the results of a blood test would be much easier in comparison. He would just have to switch the results from the forensic reports. Aw, what a bummer. Knowing those documents I read were falsified. Uh, it looks like Mr. Cameron's clothes were completely soaked in blood. Hmm, if the blood scattered here got onto Cameron's clothes. That would mean, at the time, the blood stains here had not dried yet. I see, so then this certain somebody's blood was splattered here just a short while before Mr. Cameron was murdered. Indeed. That's exactly right. However, if that's the case, wouldn't a new contradiction arise in this recreation? Okay, and then, uh, I like the blood stain. Oh. And then fire. This is a clear contradiction. Huh? You mean this bloodstain? Can you see how this bloodstain is broken up by the remains of the fire? This is proof that the fire occurred after the blood had scattered around the area. Huh? But I thought the fire occurred before the murder. It seems that information is suspect as well. If the fire had broken out after the murder, and the child who started the fire should have seen the body and, and the bloodstains. Why then did they not come forward as a witness? It's likely that that would have put place at a great disadvantage. Guess we'll need to investigate this fire in more detail. You. Sir. There should be some records of the fire in the police department under a different case file. I want you to bring me every last investigation report up about the fire. Understood, Shifu. Oh, and one more thing. What is it, sir? Contact the House of Lang in Zhengfa. There should be evidence from the case in my old, old man's room. What do you mean? I just remembered why I recognized this scene. 
A long time ago, I saw a picture in my old man's room. It was a drawing resembling this scene. What did you say? However, I think it looked like something a child drew. A child. And the artist may have been the culprit behind the fire. It should still be somewhere in my old man's room. Have them send it over here. Understood, sir. Shifu, I'm back. I brought the info on the fire and the, the fire the kid started and the photo of the, of the drawing in your father's office. And also, well, I've been waiting for this. Hurry up and hand him over. Information held by Agent Lung's father. This is it. It's exactly what I remembered. You're drawing. This was the picture drawn by the child depicting the, depicting the night of the incident. It sure looks like it was drawn with the child's touch. As I thought, the one who drew this is most likely the child who started the fire. Talk is this. Shifu! Well, now, sorry, but it's gonna have to wait. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Why do you think my old man had this? Perhaps he obtained it during the course of his investigation into the incident. Although, I don't know why he would have concealed it. Agent Long, might I be able to see the details of the fire? Yeah, sure. Allow me to read it post haste. The boy who started the fire snuck out of bed on the night of the incident. Hmm. It seems this boy went missing several days later. What? Don't tell me that he witnessed something he shouldn't have. That's horrible! He was only a child after all. Well, I'd hate for that to be the case. You can't rule out the possibility entirely. Huh? Apparently, the boy left some stuff behind at the orphanage, and it was taken as evidence. What's this? Th that's... What's that doing here? Hmm? Mr. Prosecutor, do you recognize this? Yes. I know one piece of evidence that re that's related to it. Which piece of evidence is related to what the boy left behind? Take that! I don't know what it's doing here. But isn't that the missing horn from this Musilla doll? No way! You mean this came off the president's? You know of it. Yeah, I've noticed the president kept it close by as decoration. I always thought it was strange how one of the horns was missing. If you twist the horn, this doll will play back any previously recorded audio. So if you put the mis missing horn back in place, we might be able to hear a different recording. Indeed, it is possible. The doll is currently on the 51st floor on the, of the Grand Tower. You, you heard that right? Yes sir, I'll be right back. Shifu, I got it. The mighty Mozilla doll. Well done. Give it to the prosecutor over there. If we insert the horn found at the orphanage into the doll. It's a perfect fit. Well, can you hear anything? Mr. Huang, it's Amy. It's been a while. I saw the news that you would be coming to this country. I was really nervous about doing this, but... I decided to send you a message. Please stop the playback. Judge Courtney. What's wrong? Stop it! No! It's a boy. Your son. He's just been born. I'm sorry. That's all I wanted to tell you. His name is John. John Marsh. It's a fine name for him, don't you think? Oh! <laughs> Marsh? What did she say? John. I'll be waiting in the courtyard of the orphanage at midnight on February 9th. 
Even if it's just once. I want John to be able to meet you. Sorry if I'm being selfish, but I'll be waiting. <laughs> no way! That was my... John! What's the meaning of this, Miss Courtney? John is not my biological son. He's adopted. Did John know about this? Of course he knew. John's mother, Amy Marsh, passed away about five years ago. She and I were cousins. Since we were young, we've always been really close. We were often mistaken for sisters. That's why, when she passed away, I thought it was only natural that I look after John. Also, there were circumstances which prevented me from re revealing his father's identity. He never even told John his father's name. And now it's all been revealed, thanks to the recording on that doll. And John's mother sent the doll to the president. Hey. John. Was he the president? Really my dad? Yes, he was. Before you were born, Amy worked as a diplomat in Shengfa. A diplomat. So that must be how she became acquainted with President Huang. Hang on! Didn't you tell me she worked at the orphanage? Yes, after returning to this country, Amy left her job as a diplomat. She always had a great passion for charity work, so she began working at the orphanage. Hey, Miss Courtney. So this Amy girl. She called the president there herself, but... She never showed up at the scene of the, I the SS5 incident. What's with that? Amy couldn't make it. Apparently someone had been following her the whole night. Perhaps it was Blaze. I can't say for certain, but it's possible that it was his doing. My head hurts. Ow. After that, Amy never got another chance to see the president again. So she died five years ago. This conversation must be painful for John. Alright! Hey, John, you thirsty? How about I buy us both some juice? We can go together. I'm a part of this too. I'll listen until the end. Besides, I can afford to buy my own juice. Oh, shut down by a kid. John, do you understand the reason I met with the president two days ago? The secret meeting from two nights ago. They wanted to tell him about Amy's death, and that you were alive and well. But... I... I, I see. That's why you couldn't tell us your reasons for meeting with the president until now. Get it! She would have had to reveal his connection with John. I brought a bouquet of lion lilies, so that he would understand I truly did know about Amy. Those flowers are a dear memory to the, me to the president and Amy. The first present she received from the president was a bouquet of lion lilies. But now, even he has passed away. If only he were still alive. Perhaps I could say have introduced him to John. Shifu! I'm sorry to interrupt this atmosphere, but there's something I need to say. What is it now? Can't this wait? Well, actually, there's one last item that's been delivered here from Sheng Fa. I have here. The President's Will. Wh what? The President's Will. My old man received a great number of special medals from the President himself. As a token of his trust, the President left his will in the protection of the Lung Clan. These medals and that will, they were the pride of our clan. Our family treasure, so to speak. <laughs> this is... Agent Long, the said will have something to do with the current case. You bet it does. It says here, I hereby acknowledge John Marsh as my own son. What? John's name is in the president's will. Are you certain that will was written by the president? 
Yeah, he entrusted it to the Lung Clan even before the SS5 incident took place. I'll have to appraise it back home, but by the name of the Lung Clan, this is the real deal. Yi Jun Huang was the president of an entire nation. The existence of his son would have caused considerable con controversy. However, he left behind a will, just in case. This makes it doubly sure. I still can't believe it myself, but there's no room for doubt. John Marsh, you are the son of Di Jun Huang, president of Zheng Fa. John! John! Yeah, it's been six hours. I'm not continuing. It's already 12 a.m. So I'm gonna end this tomorrow. But that just means that it will literally have been like a whole week. You know, since I started playing it on Monday night or Monday evening. And I will end it on Monday e evening. So, yeah, let me just save this real quick and uh, exit out of that and uh, boom, did the boom, boom, boom. Mm hmm. Oh my god. But I need to get something to eat. <laughs> yeah, you did not expect that, huh? <laughs> Listen, when I say this 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 episode is insanity, it's insanity. Like Oh, there's there's still going to be like more things like you're not going to see coming at all. But it all will be revealed tomorrow. Yeah, so currently we have established a connection between this case and uh, all of them, really, all of them, up till now, because Blaze has like been like a part of like the um, inheritance, the, the one with the museum and the dessert and all that. Oops. So really, we already have like a connection between all the cases. But it's gonna be connected even more, even deeper. Mm, but the thing is that Blaze has been fucking everything up for a reason. I believe we got told that in this episode. That he was like, he had an order from someone else or something like that. At least, like, for, like, uh, murdering Jill Crane. And we thought Courtney woke up and cho chose violence. <laughs> oh yeah, Blaze is way worse. And there is one character that's even worse. <laughs> Just you fucking wait. Perhaps. Well, let me just look into like what we have to do tomorrow. Well, next episode is actually not too long, but I'm not gonna do anything more now. It's already late here, and the last episode is really long. But anyways... Yeah, like Shelly the Killer mentioned in this episode, there is a mastermind behind everything. Luke is handy. Mm, I think so too. So I'm gonna make some 
make me some noodles and uh, watch some of Call Me Kevin playing GTA 5 with the Chaos mod. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go to sleep. I just need to eat something and noodles is like the easiest thing to grab. Yeah, that means that most likely um, we will start Apollo Justice tomorrow too. Maybe, I'll, we'll see. I haven't really made up my mind yet. I also have to go through uh, the previous episode now and just like timestamp everything. The, the chapters. <laughs> because I forgot to do that. I uploaded it and uh, it's, it's pirated though. And uh, then I fell asleep. <laughs> so I forgot to do that. I woke up at like 5 p.m. today and I'm like, well, fuck. Yeah. I don't think it. You know what? I'm not, I'm not gonna jinx anything. I, I believe it will take like four or five hours. And if that's the case, I still like have to have time for the the Apollo Justice one. I can try to start a little bit earlier though, because <laughs> I know I, I didn't start until like six tonight. So maybe like four thirty. Well, you're you're working, right? And just let me know like when like the time works best for you, <laughs> because I want you to be there. That's like the most important thing. I want you to be there. And I think I can... Uh... Okay, sure. I'll try to start at like at 4.30 maybe. Then I have like 8 hours until it's 12. That sounds good. Okay, anyways, with that, I'll see you tomorrow. And I hope you have a good night and you sleep well. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs>